through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashan outside, the prophesied the downfall of this wicked nation, known as Babylon, according to the Holy Scriptures. And before we begin, we're gonna give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashan, Yahweh Shai Bashan, Rachakodash. All right, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Those are the true leaders that Yahweh Bashan outside has set up on the earth to lead and guide the nation of Israel. And also want to say shalom to the 144,000 men that are laboring, pulling in his work for the sake of Yahweh Bashan outside. And also want to say shalom to the group of multitudes who consist of the man, woman, and children that are leaving, that serve the Lord to the best of their ability. So want to say shalom. Shalom. All right, so you know, we back out here with the spirit of power Yahweh Bashan outside. With another, with another week, man, and uh, through the spirit, man, it, it, it's week in and week out. Judgment is in the air. Okay, judgment's in the air, meaning what? That, you know, you how about some size presence is in the midst, man? Okay? Matter of fact, if you can't, we'll start with uh, Zephaniah 3 and 5. Up the truck. <clears throat> this is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 5. The just Lord is in the midst thereof. He will not do iniquity. Every morning, does he bring his judgment to light? He fell it not, but the unjust knoweth no shame. That's right, man. Every morning the Lord brings his judgment to light, man. He fell it not, man. Okay, the Lord is always on point with his judgment. And there's a scripture that says that the Lord is known in the judgments that he executed. Let me paraphrase that. You know? So that's how you know that Yahweh Hashanah's presence is drawn nigh to this earth. And before the Lord draws nigh to this earth, certain things have to be purged, man. All right? Because when you come before your house, you you better come correct, man. Popular and contrary belief, you cannot come as you are. Okay? And it says he does no iniquity, man. The Lord don't do no iniquity. Well, when we, we see all this judgment and everybody thinking like, why? Why did this person have to die? Why? 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 It's the judgment of the Most High. That's why it's important that we we, we know and, and read the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, man. So the scripture says uh, uh, the wages of sin is death. You know, this is why we're out here to, you know, on the highways and byways to warn our people, to let them know what sin is according to the Bible. Because our people will never talk what sin is according to the Bible. You need those Latinos and Native Americans are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. According to the Bible. Okay? And, and you know, no one can speak against that. You know, but it's very important that we teach our people that, man. So you so you so you'll know and understand when judgment is executed by your Hamas Shemal Shah, you'll be comforted. You'll have understanding of why this person died, why this person was put to death. We always consider when somebody is put to death, the reasons why. This is Isaiah 45 and start at 5. I am the Lord Yahweh, and there is none else. There is no God with me, beside me. I gird thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord Yahweh, and there is none else. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, Yahweh Shai, do all these things. That's right, man. So, from the beginning when the brother was at, what it says, I, I am the Lord, I have buried you, though thou hast not known me. Okay, the Lord is the reason why anybody's receiving anything, man, whether it be good or bad. Like you read down in verse 7, I have formed the light and created darkness. Matter of fact, we got a priest there. This is John chapter 3, verse 27. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given from him from heaven. That's right. So you won't receive anything unless the Heavenly Father sanctions it to happen unto you, man. That's why it's important walk spiritually, you know, and be understanding. When you're going through good things, you know, praise the Lord. When you're going through bad things, praise the Lord, man. Because the Lord seen it fit for that for you to go through that. You know, and it says he's girded you even though you didn't know him. To know him means to keep the commandments. First John 2 and 4. Alright? And it says that I am, there's none else, man. The most high is the one that's executed everything that's going on the planet Earth. He's the author of the judgment, man. In most four and six. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord have not done it? Okay? But a lot of people, they don't understand that they have a misconception that the Most High is all good, you know? He is all righteous, but don't get it twisted. The Most High has an evil side to him as well. But his evilness, so to speak, is not righteousness, man. Because he's evil towards wicked doers, all right? And, and the Lord does these things so we can fear, man. Right. You know, so we can repent. Right. You know, this, this is why we're out here warning our people and telling our people of these things. You don't want to die, all right? You don't want to You don't want to suffer that harsh judgment from the Most High. If you don't want to, if you don't want to perish on this side, serve the Lord. Right. All right. We're, we're only speaking of Unicos, Latinos, and Native Americans, and those are our people.
people that were scattered across the four corners of the earth. These are the, these are the people that, the, that Yahweh Shah died for, man. All right, not everybody, not the whole world. All right, because the whole world did not know the Lord was coming. Only the Israelites knew he was coming. All right, the Lord didn't die for, for the sins of the other worlds. How could they sin technically if they were never given the law? The Israelites were given the law. The Lord died for their sins, not you other nations. So enjoy your kingdom. All right, because next stop for you other nations, primarily you so-called white white people, are, are, are is captivity. Thus saith the Bible. Right. And the Heavenly Father is the one who ordained that. You got something to say? Read it. Read it in week, man. You know what they like to say? Read it in week. Okay? Ah, my brother sent a picture in the chat the other day. I was like, eat my dad. I talked to him. Eat my son. Talking about, you got to do something to cry about. Read the book of Obadiah. Come. Go ahead and read that, man. That was fine. You know what I'm saying? Because. You don't want to believe us, and that's that's fine, but it's written in the scriptures. We're going to show you that the Heavenly Father is one who ordained it. The Lord said that he's going to cut off Mount Esau by slaughter. Uh, and he says, uh, thus saith the Lord, man. You know? Con. Meaning he said it. You got to fix that up there. Con. This is Job chapter 4, verse 7. It says, remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Right. Can you read on verse 8? Verse 8. Even as I have seen iniquity, they that plow iniquity. So I can read that again. Even as I have seen they that plow iniquity and sow wickedness reap the same. That's right, man. So you reap what you sow. If you're being wicked in this earth, you're going to receive the just recompense for that. You know, if, you're dealing, if you're dealing uprightly, you're going to receive an upright reward. You know? It says in uh, Galatians 67, be not deceived, the most high is not mocked, but what's up, man, so that shall you also reap. Come. And that's why Esau, you're not going to reap any mercy because you never showed any mercy, man. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to the merciful, that will show thyself merciful, to the upright, that will show thyself upright. You've been the opposite of that, Esau. And it says in the uh, New Testament, uh, it says, if you sow to the flesh, then you shall reap corruption. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so to the spirit, you shall reap everlasting life. That's right. right. That's right. And you see that. You see that. You know, when you make the decision to either sow to the flesh or sow to the spirit, you know, sometimes the spirit will be on you be like, all right, you know, you know you ain't doing nothing much that day. You be like, all right, I got to watch a lesson. You, you sow to the spirit, you get boosted up, man. But if you keep sowing to the flesh, you're going to keep being condemned in your spirit. Like, man, I got to I gotta watch a lesson. I got to read. I got to do something. You know? You know, have that right. Even because if you're serving the Lord and you know, and you, you know, and, and the Lord take you out, if you're still, if you're sowing to the spirit, you know, you know, Lord willing, but you, you still gonna reap that everlasting life because Lord is gonna raise up, raise up his 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 uh his elect men to the everlasting life to meet him in the clouds. Talks about that in First Test First Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Galatians six and seven. Be be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You know, just like these. You know these uh, entertainers, all right, these musicians. You know, uh, Slim, Slim 400. You know, he lived a life full, full of sin. All right, he rapped about drugs. You know, killing, um, ki killing his own people. All right, so what, what happened? Death. You know, and the Most High has showed him mercy. Because yep. he got shot the first time. Yep. You know what I mean? Multiple times. You know, and then he didn't repent from that. Yep. He went right back to that filth, man. Right back to that vomit. And the most high finished them off. You know? Verse uh, Galatians 6 and 8. For he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. You see, and going back to John 6 63, the Lord says, The spirit that quickened the flesh profits nothing. Alright, so this this flesh all right, profits nothing. And that's why we got to sow, sow unto the spirit. It says, But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You know, and, and, and that's why two thirds of the nation of Israel will, will will die because they're not they're not sowing to the spirit. All right, they're they're sowing to their flesh. All right, all right, uh, the brother Yahweh. Go ahead. This is uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse seventeen, and it reads: For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. It's yin and yang, man. Pretty much, the spirit is contrary to the flesh, and the flesh is contrary to the spirit. You know, so sometimes you, the Lord might put you in a certain situation where your flesh will want to respond to it, but you gotta respond to the spirit, man. 
or vice versa. Sometimes the Lord might put you in a certain situation where you might be too high in the spirit and you gotta balance out, you know? And so you gotta be you gotta be patient with the spirit too. You know, you can't just be reacting off of your flesh, man. Give yourself some time, man. All right, and then walk in the spirit, man. Don't don't be reacting because people are so quick to react off of the flesh and what the flesh wants. But be patient, man. React off of the spirit, man. Yeah, I got a preach in the back. Yo, you got yeah, just quick point, and, and that's that's the battle that that, that, that we have. All right, the uh, um, we're we're warring against our our spirit is warring against our flesh. All right, and vice versa. You know, and, and one thing to combat, you know, that flesh is is, is the scriptures. All right. Brother, go get a quick one. Like the brother Muhammad said, you know, you gotta be patient, man. You know. Yeah. This is Sirach chapter five, verse eleven. Be swift to hear. And let thy life be sincere. Mm -hmm. And with patience give answer. With patience give answer, man. Don't be quick to answer something or to respond to something, man. People don't like that either. They don't like when you when you take your time to uh, answer their questions. Yep. And, that, and that's more that's more efficient too. Yep. You know, even with uh with like uh when you like when you selling things, all right, when somebody asks you a question, it's, it's better to, to give a slow answer. All right, because when you give a quick answer, you know, they make you catch your mind. That's why that, that that's why they uh that's why that, that they, they say that quote fast talking of the hustle. Like when you are fast talking, you're a hustle. You're just trying to be in and out. No, we're not trying to do that. We're trying to give you a sincere answer. Right. Because yeah, you can't in this truth, you can't just wing it, man. Because if you gotta know what you're talking about. You know, that's why we were meditating on that yesterday, you know. Brothers are really scholars, man. Because brothers are diligently studying his word. Okay? You know, and, you, and, and, it's, and it's the thing, uh, out on the highways and byways, you know, we talked about that yesterday, out on the highways and byways, you stick to what you know, man. You teach what you know. You don't just teach something that's above your pay grade, so to speak, man, because one person's soul, if you deceive one person, that's blood on your hands, man. So you better off just being patient, doing what you know, okay, and rather than uh, try to execute hastily to look like you know something, man. That, that'll get you judged. That's why we ask a question one by one. You know, people on the other side, they want to be hasty and, and, and ask this question and ask that question, ask this question. And we always will be like, no, let's answer the first question first because we want you to have understanding. It's better that you get that one question answered than we just partially answer a whole bunch of them. You know, you're, not, you're not leaving from us with, with, with anything at that point. This Colossians chapter 3, verse 25, but he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done. And there is no respect of person. That's right, man. So if you're doing wrong, you're going to receive for that wrong you've done, man. And a lot of people think just because the Lord don't catch you in that moment that you're okay. You're stop free. But the Lord, be long-suffering. The Lord is patient. The Lord is merciful. Really, if the Lord doesn't judge you in that immediate moment, that's because he's giving you opportunity to repent. You know? But a lot of jakes, they, they despise that, man. They look at the mercy of the Lord as, um, you know, a, a, a light thing. But you're gonna see that the mercy of the Lord is not a light thing, especially when these judges keep coming down more and more during the time of Jacob's trouble. You know, where you can't walk down the street peacefully like you're doing now, okay? Because when Jacob's trouble comes, you're gonna either have to worry about martial law, wild beasts running all over the place, trying to devour you, okay? You being dead, hungry for famine, you know? Two thirds acting like a niggas man, you know, with, with swords in their hands. You know, the, the video came out, the spirit had a setup where a video came out this week about these jakes, they were just outside chilling in front of a house or whatever. And you know, a car came by and sprayed their ass up, man. Right. You know, that's the type of shit that you're gonna be seeing in Jake's trouble. And they didn't just do a drive-by, they walked down on them too, man. And overkilled their ass, man. It's personal. Right. And that's what it's gonna be like during these times, man. That's why we're gonna need the divine intervention of Yahweh Bashem al Shai, man. You know, let's just talk about when the enemy coming like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord is gonna lift up a standard against them, man. Because there, there's standards that's gonna have to be lifted, man. Esau's coming down with too much heat. See, that was just Jake who ran down on other Jake. But when Esau rose, man, the script say he's coming in like a flood, man. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna have more firepower and more um more uh men on the field, so to speak, man. Sometimes the most high they look like that. The most high, the, I, I forgot where the scripture was where it says it's a, it seemed as if uh, the, the wicked, you know, they seem to live a long life. You know, they seem like nothing happens, nothing bad happens to them. But the most high does everything, it, it's his will. You don't know what the Most High's judgment is going to be for that person. You don't know what the Most High's will is going to be for that person. You know, the Most High, he may do, he may be evil in the beginning, 
But the, but the Most High knows his heart. The Most High knows who he is. And he may repent years later. You know, or the Most High may wait for you to think that everything is all good, for you to have children, and you still don't repent. The Most High will put you to death then. Right. When you're thinking, man, I'm, I'm, it's over with, you know, I'm not doing, I'm not living that life no more. But then you, you come across the middle of the Lord and you, and, and you, you refuse to repent and serve the Lord. And in your, in your, in your safety, the most high gets you. Right, brother. You know? And you don't, you don't want to be like that. But the most high do things like that. The most high is very patient. He, 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 he executes. Man, his execution is, 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 is perfect. Yeah. Hey, like the brother, uh, child saying he an on time God. Oh, you know, he's the Lord always on time. As a matter of fact, I was watching this movie uh, like two days ago called um, Underworld Rise of the Lichens. The elder put us on to that, so I checked it out. And there was a moment in the movie where the lady, she got scarcely saved. I'm talking about the, the, the thing came this close to her face, Ooh. this close. And the dude who saved her, he stabbed her. She was right there, and then he yanked her up out of, uh, out of the hole, man. And that's how y'all watch Noshaw is going to come in for his elect, man. He's going to be right in front of our face, and the Lord going to cut their ass off. Hey, just like I was explaining to the brother, remember the old head in the video? Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Bro, he barely, yo, any second more, he would have got hit with those bullets. But as soon as he went in, rah, he set the yep, That's what I was thinking too, brother. He was, he was two guys with nonsense. Hey, I don't want to punch this All right, this is uh, Sirach, chapter 43 and verse 29. The Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous in his power. Right. When ye glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can, for even yet will he far exceed. And when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength, and be not weary, for ye can never go far enough. That's right, brother. The Lord is very terrible and marvelous is his power, man. He's known as the king of terrors. I remember one time I was uh, talking, to, this is when I was early in the truth. So you know when you're early in the truth, you try to tell everybody about the truth. And I was talking to a family member, and they're thinking that, you know, the Lord is all love. I told him, the Lord is, you should say that he's the king of terrors. He stopped and he was like, it says that? I was like, yes, man. Multiple scriptures say that the Lord is terrible. And it said what? When you exalt him, go as far as you can, you can never go far enough, man. You know, and that's the thing. We want to go hard in this truth because... We want to know in that day when it's time to cash out spiritually that we got some shekels in our spiritual bank account. Because each week you come out, every time you put up a lesson, every time you do something brotherly, you know, so on and so forth, fast, pray, you're adding to your spiritual bank account. You know, so when that day is going to come where it's time to cash out, you know you're good because you've been doing right according to the Lord. So you're going to be right according to you. Lord will. It's, uh, First Peter 4 and 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the most high. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Right. Yeah. Judgment is going to begin at the house of the Abbas And it's going to start with those who know their Israel back. The Lord says, Gotcha. Shall be beaten with many stripes, man. So it's one thing if you know you're an Israelite, okay, and you're not doing it according to the will of the Lord, that's gonna get you worse judgment than your average two thirds, man. But it's another thing if you don't know shit and you, you know you never decided to repent, you're still gonna get judged. But for those who know better, you're supposed to do better, man. It says that in the scriptures, man. I think it's in James, if I'm not mistaken. You know, to him that knows to do well and doing good not, to him it is a sin. Or to paraphrase him. I got coming back to God. It's Luke 12 and verse 46. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him asunder, cut him, cut him in asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Verse 48, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of strife shall be beaten with few strife. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. That's right, man. And 
we all gonna fall with our one night. We'll talk about that, man. With great, that's a quote from the Spider-Man movie, but it was spiritual. With great power comes great responsibility, man. So the Lord has bestowed upon us the greatest power that a man can ever receive in this planet Earth, which is to know this word and to apply it. So that's come through great responsibility. And ultimately it takes discipline, man. You know? Discipline in this truth is what's gonna keep you in good graces with the Lord. And you know, that's a lot of things too. A lot of guys they know they Israel, but they don't they don't choose the discipline of wisdom and that'll get them jacked up, man. That'll get them judged, man. Yeah, a lot of Jake know to be Israelites, yeah. But they they they, they want to do their own will though. They want to continue to be a thug in the streets. They want to do their own thing, even though they know that they Israel. And they know they they they, they know what, what is required of them. You know, but they want to establish their own righteousness. Right. Well, so, uh, this is Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the uh, after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnal, carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Right. So if you think it carnally, okay, that's going to lead you on to death, man. Let's just say there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof. Are the ways of death, right? Paraphrase. So you gotta be thinking spiritually minded. You should say it's the spirit that quickens the flesh, profit of nothing. And that's what you got. I was gonna say, and that's in every situation. I was gonna say, even when you look at most of these jets, when they get judged, what are they doing? Carnal things, though. Right. Yeah, right. Right. It takes faith to follow the spirit. It takes faith. You gotta really put what you think and how you feel to the back burner, to the side. And, and trust in the Lord. You know, and, and I say it all the time, and you, it's not as easy as you think to trust in the Lord. You have to really have faith to trust in the Lord. A lot of people say that they trust the Lord, but they don't trust in the words that you say. You have to lean upon him, man. What else are you gonna lean upon, man? Try, try him out. Right. What else are you gonna hope for? I think that's in the book of Psalms. Let's see if I can find the brother, the brother of my dream. But you know, we'll see how I That's making that sacrifice, man. You know, right. trusting in the Lord with all your heart and lean not upon thine own understanding, as the scripture says. Right. That takes a lot of faith, man. But the Lord always is right. He is true. He is for your well-being. But when you go about trying to do your own thing, you're going to suffer, man. This is Psalms 30, oh, 37. Oh, 39? Okay, Con, right here. Con, this is Psalms 39 and 5. Behold, thou hast made my days as in hand breaded, and my age is as nothing before thee. Right, we only live short lives in this thing, man. You know, let's read the scripture in Psalms where it says, Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to your wisdom, man. You know, but Lord, Lord knows if we're going to even make it out today, much less tomorrow, much less the next week. That's why it's important to fear the Lord each day that goes by. You got it, brother. Huh. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Mm -hmm. Salah. And that's, that's another reason why you can't be proud in this thing, man. We're nothing but earth and ashes. We glory in the fact that we know the Lord, but that's about it. Don't glory in the fact that you might know how to fight or you got a lot of money or, you know, there's nothing to glory about, man. The only thing to glory about is the fact that the Lord is dealing with you. Um, that's what I say, you know, to myself when I just speak to myself. You know, we, we boast in how much you got to shine. You know, we boast in his word. We boast in his understanding and his shame. We boast in the power of the Lord and his judgment. We both those things. Yeah, because like, this scripture kind of reminds me of like, just because a man is in his prime, hey, look at um, Conor McGregor. Yep. You know, he ain't he in his prime right now, but look what the Lord did. He yeah. snapped his leg in half. Right. All that money don't mean nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, verse six, surely every man walketh in a vain, in a vain shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. Yeah, that's why it says in Luke, the 12th chapter, you know, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. You know, so then who shall those things be which thou hast laid up, man? Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to not set your treasures on things on earth, man. Because this whole world is going to pass away. This is a corruptible world. We look, like you're saying, here we have no continuous city, but we look for one to come. That's right. um, and that's the funny precept, though, man. That's the funny one. He said, so. You know, right. I have enough. You know right. what I'm saying? And that was a funny one, man. Yep. He's a fool. 
chapter 12 verse 3 for I say through the, the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as the most high hath dealt to every man the measure of faith Yo, that's your part brother you don't want to think more highly than what you really are man you know if you if there's another wrong with acknowledging how far the Lord has taken you but always Remain that level of, of of staying grounded, man. You know, and this is what you're saying, like uh, to let another man glory in you instead of you doing it yourself. Your own lip, not your own lip. I think it's in Galatians. Wait, he talking about another one. I think it's in Galatians. Yeah. Nah, that's not the one he's talking about. Let me let me see your phone. Uh -huh. Y'all go. Ahead. Nine, uh, 39 Marine 6 again. Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, now, and now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Right. What are we waiting for, man? We're waiting for your hollow box to y'all to shine, man. That's who our hope is in. Verse. Uh, verse 8, deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. I was dumb. I opened not my mouth because thou didst, didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the by the blow of thy hand. Yep. Sometimes the Lord be judging you, chastising you, and you are up. Ah, the Lord had heavy problems. Uh, but it could be way worse, man. You know, and he chastises, he corrects us out of love, man. Hey, hey Salakia, yeah, I, he was mentioning the one in Proverbs. I don't know what it is, but you find his spirit. So, Salakia, I can't tell you something about the one in Galatians. Proverbs 27 and 2. Let another man praise thee. Yeah, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger and not thine own lips. You don't want to just be glorying yourself. You want to let somebody else say, man. You're in the spirit, you're doing a good job. You don't want to just, yeah, I'm doing a good job. You want to let other men do it for you. Mm -hmm. well, that's, that's even like, that's even in the world. Yeah. That's the spirit of the Lord, you know? And then when it comes out of nowhere, he wasn't even anticipating that. And some of my brother just tells you that. That's the Lord, man. The Lord can't believe it. A dude was just down there with fringes on with dreads. He just turned into a building, though. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah. I wanted him to come down here, but he made a turn. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's right. That's right. Well, you need what two or three witnesses let every word be established. Yep. The Lord said the Father and the Spirit testify to them. And, and they even do that in the world. When you have like uh, somebody who, who has to present a presentation or a speech, like TED Talks or whatever, somebody comes up and they give your credentials first. They come up and say, hey, you know, we got uh, Jerry Rodriguez coming up. You know, he's got a master's in this. You know, he got a PhD this and this. And he's going to tell you about all the great things that he's accomplished. Another man tells your works. And that's how you get presented. You know what I'm saying? The same way go for brothers in the truth. You know what I'm saying? You tell a brother, hey, yo, that brother beautiful. That brother's charitable. That That's... That's how it's supposed to work. Right. That precept with uh, John 5 and 31. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. That's right. That's yeah, can, actually, can you keep reading? It might be a little bit more on that one. Because I, I, if I'm not mistaken. 
um, because I think it goes into it a little bit more. But that's right, brother. His, your record got to be true based on, and that's the scriptures for every, by two or three witnesses. It shall every word be established. You know that that's how it's supposed to go. This John chapter five and verse thirty. I can of my own self do nothing. Mm -hmm. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just. Judgment is in the air. No. And what's about what is the thing about judgment is what it must be just judgment. Mm -hmm. Righteous judgment, man. Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. And a lot of dudes seek their own will. You know, I'm not talking about that dude specifically, but a lot of them jakes will dress and punches seek their own will, man. You know, it's supposed to speak about being self-willed. You tell the Jake, hey, Jake, you're not supposed to have them dread. Oh, man, you know, I've been having these dreads without seeking your own will, man. It's supposed to say, a sinful man will not be reproved, but find an excuse according to his own will. The second answer is chapter 14, verse 25. Therefore, if so be that ye, that, that ye will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive, and after death ye shall obtain mercy. Subdue your own understanding. Lean out into your own understanding. Proper square box. Look yourself up. Mm -hmm. I want him to read down to like verse 38. Uh, John chapter 5 and 31. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. Mm -hmm. There is another that beareth witness of me. And I know that the witness which he witnessed of me is true. That's even when you go to court, right? You can't be like, oh, do we have a witness? And you go get up on the stand. You know what I'm saying? Who else saw it go down, bro? You know, it's not true of you, your own witness. That's why when you have, when a crime is committed, they say you need an alibi. You know, we need, and where were you? You can't say I was at the house alone. You had to say you was there with somebody else. Bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, mm -hmm. but these things I say that ye might be saved. Mm -hmm. He was a burning and shining light. Ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Mm -hmm. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the work which the Father hath given me to finish the same work that I do. See, and, and, and this is referring. This is referring to John the Baptist, right? He says, you know, uh, John the Baptist was a great witness, but he said, I got something that's greater than man, right? Because, and this is ultimately what it comes down to what we're doing. We have a greater witness of our works than men. You know, even though these, even though these wicked people out here got their own ideas about stuff, at the end of the day, who's the main one witnessing? Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, man. And the angels, they're witnessing the great works that we're doing, even if these people don't want to don't bat an eye for it, right? Go ahead, brother. Uh, I'll read it again. John 5 and 36. But I, but I have greater witness than that of John for the works which the Father has given me to finish. The same work that I do. Bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. Mm -hmm. and, and the Father himself which has sent, sent me has borne witness of me. See, the Father himself. Yahweh himself got witness of Yahweh Shah, man. What greater witness do you need, man? We talking about the most high here. Go ahead, bro. He have neither heard his voice at any time, mm -hmm. nor seen his shape. Kind. That was that was the point, you know what I'm saying? But hey, what greater witness than you got than the Most High? And the Most High created Yahweh Shah, you know? So hey, what, what greater witness do you need? That's why all of these people, they sit up and they talk, they smack. We don't need them to witness. We don't want them as witnesses because, you know, sometimes you have a witness on the stand, but they ain't really about you. Then they really to turn you over. So we uh, having a witness of Yahweh and Yahweh Shah is greater witness than a witness of man. Like, who can tell you to go red? That's right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the scripture says the most high be born, who can be against That's him? right, bro. <laughs> he is the ultimate authority. Mm -hmm. He calls the shots. And the thing about the most high is that he follows his own rules, so to speak, because he has multiple witnesses too. You know how the is considered a witness, the angels consider witnesses. We are considered witnesses, man. So no one can ever say that the Lord's uh, judgment is not just. That's why the scripture says make food without ministry. You know, and the, and the scripture also says faith without works is dead, man. The works is going to speak for itself, man. Right. You know, because we come in the name of Yahweh Shai down the shop. Yep. You know, he's our witness, man. Right. And we have all, all the witnesses of those who, who watch our lessons. You know, those, those people, they witness our works, man. 
I think he said in there, my works testify of me. He said, yeah, you see, your, your works, your works. I think it's like verse 35 or 36 that you said in there. In the very, yeah, for the very works sake, your works is a witness. You know what I'm saying? Like when you go down, uh, I remember Z, Z asked a brother in a minute, hey, yo, bro, what's your, what's your channel? Let me see your works. You know what I'm saying? Even though brothers get channels struck and down and stuff like that, but that we literally, uh, you know, uh, creating a, a book through the spirit. You know what I'm saying? All of those epistles that we're putting up, you know what I'm saying? You're creating a, 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 a catalog of the things that you've done. That's why I don't worry during the time of persecution. If, if these videos are still around, the works is going to speak for itself. They said, and their works do follow them. Our works do follow them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, when people speak evil of us, man, hey, man, those who watch the, the lessons, man, they're going to they gonna speak, man. They're going to know what we were out here doing. We don't come out here doing our own will. We come out here doing the will of the Lord, as it's written in the scriptures. Right. You know, the scriptures itself is going to speak for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for real. Uh, this is Revelation 14, verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's why it's very important to, to sow into the spirit, all right? Because these works are going to follow us, all right? If you sow into the flesh, that, that those works ain't going to follow you in the kingdom of heaven, man. Kind. The Lord don't care if you a if you a uh, if you a doctor, all right? If you a uh, if you a, a, a therapist, the Lord don't care what kind of job you got in this society. Are you doing? Are you doing the works for him? Uh, and uh, I want—I just want to say a hearty uh, shalom and a hub thumb to the Boston camp. You know, and the brother Raheem out there. Uh, you know, the brother uh, is now in the spirit. You know, if somebody can give me Philippians one real quick uh, through the spirit, uh, one maybe twenty-three. Give me one. Uh, yeah, one. In, it's one and twenty-one. Let's start it there real quick. You know, because through the spirit. You know, I just want to send some love to them brothers because I know, hey, at the end of the day, that brother was working diligently for the Lord. And so now he's with you, how was shy, and he's in a better situation. And may the Lord bless him and may the Lord bless the Boston brothers. Con, con, yep, yep. He gonna be, hey, he gonna beat us in the chariots. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be waiting for us, you know what I'm saying? He, the dead shall rise first. Go ahead, bro. Philippians 1 and 21. For to me, to live is my shiat, and to die is gain. See that? To die is gain. You see, at the end of the day, we know, and he goes into how it's needful for the elect to be out here, but to die is gain, man. So that brother has gained uh, something through the spirit, and now he's with our Lord. Go ahead. It says, verse 22, but if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Mm -hmm. Yet what I shall choose, I hope not. Mm -hmm. For I am in a strait betwixt two. Having a desire to depart and to be with Mashiach, which is far better. And see, that's really the point, you know, because it goes into, you know, that's the point I want to get as far as the brother, his situation. It says to be with Yahweh Shai is far better. You know, he's with the Lord now. He's in a better situation. So, you know, hey, much love to that brother in Thawada for your works. And, uh, you know, Shalom and Habba Thumb to the Boston camp. Start at 12. Revelations 14 and verse 12 it says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep mm. the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahweh Shah. Okay. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which died in the Lord from henceforth. Mm -hmm. Yea, say of the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works. Oh, yeah, that's right, man. Blessed are the dead. Die in the Lord, man. Mm -hmm. that's, that's right, bro. Hey, and, and that's another thing, too. Your, your karma works won't follow you because you're going in the spirit, bro. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's going to even say your treasures upon earth, man. Why sent you? Hey, the scripture say, Will thou set thine eyes on that which is not? For riches truly do grow wings and fly away like eagles. Remember, paraphrasing, man. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing wrong with making money on this side, but don't set your heart on it, man. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be corrupt. It's going to corrupt and go away. Second mm -hmm. you know? Ezra chapter 9 verse 7 And everyone that shall be saved And shall be able to escape by his work And by faith whereby he has believed mm -hmm. so You're going to be able to escape by your works, man That's why it's very important that you do to put a work in this thing, man Diligently It's just said you're going to be able to escape by it, man It's very important mm -hmm. pretty, pretty, This is a uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50, and it says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. All right? So all the things that we're doing on this side, 
or all the carnal things that were done on this side, vain things are not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Lord don't care if you was a, a, a rapper and you had a nice rap career, you had four or five businesses, all these things, oh, I, I help and I fed the poor, all those things are not going to uh, 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 help you, man. They're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. What did you do? All right, what did you do for the Lord? Did you keep his commandments? Did you at least keep the least of his commandments? Did you do those things? Did you do what as you commanded? What on the highways and byways? Did you read? Did you pray? Did you study? Did you call upon his name? Did you teach and show others who they are in the scriptures? If you didn't do those things, everything that you're doing for the world means nothing. It's all going to be burnt in the fight. This place ain't going to be remembered. They'll give away food, but handing out pork sandwiches and pepperoni pizza. Right. Wait, he he always had that one, or he did that recently? Cause I'm re see, see, I know he had tats on his face, but I don't know if he got that one recently. If, if he did, that's through. See. Yeah. You Man, I saw this uh, this uh, this dude. He had dreads, and I, I'm assuming this is baby mama, cause he was getting like toys and shit out of the car. She's just cussing his ass out, man. She like, fuck you, you bitch ass nigga. You ain't shit, you know. And then he like, fuck you, you ain't like. They just going in on each other, man. Complete lack of respect, man. I'm like, you know, in my mind, you know, part of my flesh wanted to say, hey, don't talk to him like that. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, he wicked as hell. He deserve it. I'm like, but. Yeah, that, mind, hey, that's what I say. Metal not in many matters, man. You know, because, hey, you, you dipping in somebody else's business is unnecessary. But I'm like, they both is demons. And the scriptures say, the Lord giveth the wicked woman to a wicked man. You know, so, they, yeah, that's right. They, they made for each other, man. I was like, that don't make no goddamn sense, man. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, that's what uh, Lupe said. Match, match uh, made in heaven, set the, set the fires in hell. <laughs> yep. Travel now with a bold fellow.
because they, they might be your homeboys or whatever, but if, they ain't onto, if they're not doing stuff that's right, you got to learn to separate yourself from them, man. Because uh, you could just be chilling with your homeboy one day, wanting to go get a sandwich. Next thing you know, he run into an op, and both of y'all get lit up, man. Because um, he was riding with that nigga, man. That's why you got to watch who you hang around in this faith, man. Mm -hmm. You cannot hang around everybody in this faith. Certain people you got to cut off. You don't got to completely disregard them, but you love them from a distance, man. Because that's for your own spiritual uh, welfare. Well, I, I bring them to a, a more in my environment. You know what I mean? To my crib or to spots that I know is safe. I, I'm not going anywhere where they want me to go. You know? Out in the open, in the hood, niggas be around. I don't know what this person has done. You know? He, they, he's my friend, but you don't know what these guys be doing. Man. Shit, if he... If you know he he why he be wildin', hey, leave his ass alone. Cause bring them to your house, niggas will follow you to your house. Yep, that's why I say travel not with a bold fellow. Yeah, don't don't even. Hey, if you know what I'm saying, right, we all got friends in the world that's worldly. But if you know he into that that hot shit, hey, leave his ass alone, man. Yep. Some people just not even worthy to be around. Yep, yep. And they suck your energy, man. Mm -hmm. He was talking about that yesterday. Spirits literally hot. Spirits hot, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Literally. You saw that uh, uh that concert, Astro World. That spirit, he, <laughs> yeah, he's like a kangaroo in that bitch. Bro, <laughs> spirit, he, he lifted up his arms. Yeah, yeah. Did uh, what they call that? Crowd dive? What they be calling yeah, that? Crowd, <laughs> crowd surfing. Yeah, I'm saying in the mosh pit. <laughs> That's real, bro. Uh, because uh, our friends and family in the world, they don't make the same decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you're out with somebody with your friends or whatever in the world, and they bump into somebody, you may be like, oh, I'm sorry, brother, it's all good, you know, it's all, you know. He may not make that same decision as you make. And he may put both of y'all lives in trouble. He may start mean mugging. He may start looking at mumbling under his breath. That's going to put y'all in harm. Because that, that's a conflict, you know. What has uh, 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 darkness to do with light? Or That's right. Verse 14, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what have fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Mm -hmm. you know, you can, we, we have, if you're serving the Lord, man, we're, we're not in the same mindset as the world. You know, they're going to make carnal decisions. We're going to make spiritual decisions. And the Lord has blessed us with understanding. Even if we make a mistake with dealing with one of our brothers in the world, we know how to deal with it. At least we know that they're Israelites, they're our brothers. Let's, you know, be merciful, be like, yeah, it's cool, no, no big deal. You know what I'm saying? So that's how we that's how we carry ourselves, because the Lord has increased our understanding. We know why we're in this position. We know why we're you know why we know why we we're in the ghettos and the hoods. We we understand why, you know, uh, uh these these men are the way that they are and the daughters are the way that they are. They come from these broken homes. We we have these understandings, man. The Lord has blessed us, man, but they don't have that understanding. They don't put your house shine, your house shine uh, uh, first. Try, right, bro. In the world. Mm -hmm. and he, and he really in the world, man. Uh, they say not the world. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a foreign mind, walking about, seeking who you may devour. And that word vigilant literally means to be on the lookout for possible danger. Mm -hmm. Alright? Because the scripture is also saying a prudent man uh, for a sea of people. Alright, so you gotta you gotta you gotta be on point. Alright, you gotta be on your P's and Q's all right, when we out here in this world. Mm -hmm. Alright, because at, at any at any moment anything can happen, man. Alright, so it's best to stay in the spirit, right, and be able to, and be on the lookout for possible danger. Mm -hmm. right. The spiritual workflow out here, right? And some say we're in the valley of the shadow of death. Strong. Death is following us like a shadow out here, man. Mm -hmm. That's why you always gotta stay in the spirit. Wow. Oh, you got to do something like that? And you got Esau out here, you know, he always trying to set up traps. Uh, don't just say like he, he's in the village just working. Yep. <laughs> right? Yep. So they, they, be, they be trying to uh, uh, trap you up. Mm -hmm. oh, remember that night coming back after fellowship, man, you had cops on school that night. Oh, brother was saying the troll was waiting for him. Where I was getting off on my exit, troll was waiting for me too, man. That's what Esau does. He lies and waits. And, and in, the, in the middle of the night, if you want some nigga shit, man, hey, you really... 
up to the Lord's mercy through that cop, so to speak. Because uh -huh. if the cop want to do some nigga shit to you, turn this camera off, ain't nobody around, ain't nobody watching. Of uh -huh. course, the Lord is around. But that doesn't show you, man. He li he live uh, privately in them secret places, man. That movie, Dr. Sleep, I don't want to spoil it too much, but I recommend brothers to check it out. That movie exposes a lot on the left-hand side of the elites, man, and, and what they do with them children. You can see the demons that be on the police officers, or anybody. Like, it could be anybody. You can see the demon on them, man. You can see that they want to start some trouble. You can see it, man. But, you know, I was uh, driving down I-95, and I was going a little fast, and I seen the state trooper. He moved his car like he was ready to pounce on me. But then at the last second, he just backed up. Yeah, I'm like, I just gave all praise to you. How about you know, shot? Because he, he could have got me. I was dead. I was wrong. But he backed up off of me. That's how you know we're in captivity. You know, when a police officer like, like when something like that happens, it's like your heart almost like drop. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know? That's it through. Hey, yep. Hey, that's a, that's a curse. The curse to say that. And see, uh, uh, that's the thing about that. Um, about that camera, somebody mentioned the body camera. Yeah, yeah. And a video came out like that recently. Like a uh, cop was talking to somebody, and then he like he clicked the fucking camera off. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, yo, all right. He's like, yeah, I don't know if the Jake was talking shit. Like, uh, I forget what he said, but Esau turned that camera off, bro. He like, yeah, we, hey, we about to go in, then, bro. Uh, <laughs> he gonna tell his superior his battery ran out. Like, right, right. It died on me. Yeah, it died on me. <laughs> it's First Corinthians 15 and 33. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. All right. Going to that word communication, it'll go back to companionship. All right. mm. See, so you gotta you gotta be careful of who you hang around with. Mm. Right? You gotta know who you hang around with. All right? And it's best just to be be by yourself or be with the brother. Mm -hmm. You know, or, or, or be with your wife. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you hang around with niggas in the world, all right, eventually that spirit is gonna hop on you. Mm -hmm. You know, next thing you know, you're gonna be you're gonna be more engaged with, with worldly shit, all right? Those demons gonna hop on you, you know? So that's why it's best to be solo with the brothers or with your wife. Yep, and then and then you know the Lord will start to pull you away from those friends in the world. You know, even like um you'll start to read the Lord will show you different signs on why you need to separate yourself. Like I even got a friend in the world recently, and uh, this is the spirit we talking about this. I just told Gabar a couple days ago. I got a boy in the world. I was like, you know, I don't hang around him that much. I go around like once a month, maybe. But I was like, and not even that often. But I was like, you know what? I think I need to chill on, chill out from him. He ain't, he ain't no, no hot head or nothing. But you start to realize certain things in people's characters. You're like, you know, maybe it's just not wise for me to be around like that. You know. Yeah, be no subtle things. Yep. This is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Ooh. That's right. He that walk with wise men shall be wise, man. You know, and I was, I was meditating on that with the brother Q. Okay, we was fellowship and we did a lesson there. But he was saying, hey, spirits hop and jump, whether it be on the right hand side or the left hand side. You can get a negative influence or a positive influence, man. And the precept that I brought up that came to mind was the one about uh, King Saul. Once he came amongst the company of prophets, he started to prophesy, man. Mm -hmm. You see that happen all the, all the time. We'd be in the spirit on the highway, somebody would walk by, and they'll be like, yeah, you know, and they'll try to put in their little two spiritual two cents. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's because that spirit is on them. You know what I'm saying? That see. spirit rubbed off on them, you know? Mm -hmm. That righteous spirit. And that probably could have been on his spirit. Just before he came up here, just walking around the corner, just on his pitch, talking to himself, and then he came here, he just had to go on to it. Yep. As you see, and that's a good example. And on the opposite end, you see what happened to King Saul when he was when he heard them women. Yep. <laughs> you know, them women say, "Oh, King Saul has his thousands, but King David has slayed his ten thousands." He says, uh, "After that, uh, that uh, wicked spirit he entered into him." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He, 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 that was really a spirit of jealousy. That's really what that was. A spirit of jealousy that overcame him because he's like, I'm the king. I, I deserve the highest praise. You know, but at the end of the day, King David is a man after the most high's heart. They, you know, that's his servant. So at the end of the day, he chose him of all his brothers. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, King Saul, you know, it was set up in the spirit to fall to the, where it was, where you're going to have the house of Saul versus the house of David. That's really what it came down to. So the Lord had to make certain things happen to make it come into fruition. You know, but yeah, you're right. Them spirits be hopping, brother. I'll show you. Yeah, I got you. Uh, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Seven spirits, too. I started at 16. It says, What agreement have the temple of the Most High with idols? For ye are a temple of the living power. As Yahweh hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. 
I will be their power and they should be my people. Verse 17, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean things and I will receive you. You want to speak? Oh, okay. You got it. Oh, no, you got it. I didn't know of you. I thought you were getting something. That's right, man. You know what? Women have the temple of the most high for idols, man. Imagine, you know, this is folly, but I'm saying this reputation sake. Imagine we was out here in the camp. We had some big ass fucking idol statue, whatever it may be, just sitting right in front of us, man. That's an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing when you look at it in a spiritual sense with some people you hang around. You know that they in the world. You know what I'm saying? You know that they just complete niggas. They ain't trying to get right. Mm -hmm. You know? And like I said, it's circumstantial. And some of those might be family members who you can't get away from, so to speak. Right, right. So you love them from a distance, man. You don't want to get unequally yoked unbelievers because that'll knock you out the faith, man. Mm -hmm. Even think about like on the left hand side, all right, so called elites on the left hand side. The elites they hang around with like minded people. Yeah. You know, niggas in, that's, that's in the industry, in the rap industry, or these entertainers, they hang around like minded people. You know, so what else more us on the right hand side? Right, because you know? it's beneficial. It's yeah. beneficial to you know whatever you're doing. Yeah. You know, I, I like to hang around men of the Lord because they're they're gonna be there to lift me up. We're of like mind. Yeah. You know, the little Dirk said in one of his songs, he said, um, you know, he trying to be a millionaire, so he hang around millionaires. Right. You know. Hey, I got a quick a quick one. Oh, go ahead, my uh, This Psalms chapter one and verse one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in the law doth he meditate day and night. Yahweh precept, man. That's a Yahweh precept. Blessed is the man that standeth not in the counsel of the ungodly, man. And that is ultimately spiritually, first and foremost, but even to a certain degree on a physical sense, it applies too, man. You know, but like I said, it's all circumstantial. And that's a part of having discernment in this truth as well. Knowing the ins and outs. Knowing when to, you know, embrace and to refrain from embracing. Mm -hmm. uh, Q got one. This is uh, Syrac or Ecclesiastes Ghost, chapter 6, verse 36. It says, And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee be times unto him, and let thy foot where the steps of his door. <laughs> that's right, see? Uh, get B times unto him and, and let thy foot where where is our where are his door which means like absorb the knowledge wisdom and understanding that you can from other men being in good company of men that have knowledge wisdom of the lord you know that's important man because the more you around those things the more energy you observe from the spirit absorb from the spirit you see but uh, when you around wicked men you start absorbing those uh wicked spirits you know it's it, it's kind of like uh, some stones some stones deflect energy and some stones absorb energy man all right and we the scriptures say that we are lively stones right so at the end of the day these people in the world they're they're deadly stones man you know they're they're polluted they're they're stones that are gonna they're, they give off negative energy and if you're around that you can absorb that you know if the lord of the lord decide like, hey yo you know this dude he being a reprobate he's not he's not uh doing what he's supposed to do so the lord might let that you absorb that wicked spirit man and you don't want that man hey you Birds of a feather flock together. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's Cyrac 27 and 12. If thou be among the indiscreet, observe the time. See, so you got to be like, hey, you know, I spent that script. It's time to clear it. But he continually among men of understanding. Ooh. He continually among men. That's right. That's right. Brothers acts the fellowship. Hey, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. You know, hey, uh, I, I ain't seen a brother all week. Yeah. You know, and you down in the spirit. Hey, brothers, you mind if I fuck with him? Don't make a lesson on this yeah, I, the brother I don't want to ask the other day, yeah, who trying to uh, link up, do a lesson. I fell through because I had to work, but I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, the brothers, but I, yeah, I'm like, the brothers, I be kicking. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't be there, bro. Yeah, call all y'all about shit. It never fails. Every time I'm down and out, every time my spirit feels drained, I get around the brothers after rejuvenating. Right. Jacob, the sick, you know, literally, like, for what an infirmity. Get around the spirit of the Lord, man, you start to heal up. Even on the highways and byways. Sometimes you got little pains when you come on the highways, and then they start to diminish. You start to forget them. When you wax really hot in the spirit, yep. that's because the spirit of the Lord is around, man. That's right. You cut a cow, you pull it, you little sore, you leave this thing, you ready to work out. Oh, For real, bro. Uh, man. Yep. Yeah, that is a spiritual boost when we leave it. Yeah. Yeah. And even when something, man, even when sometimes I'm around the brothers, 
I can feel the spirit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the mix. So really, the more the merrier when it comes to having righteous brothers around, is the more that you feel like the spirit, man. Mm -hmm. It's y'all pop, bro. Yep, yep. It's, it's unexplainable, really. Yep. This is Ecclesiastes or Sirach chapter 37, verse 12. But be continu but be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord, Woo! whose mind is according to thy mind, and will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. Bro, somebody just put that on the comment yeah. board. <laughs> Call all y'all my Bayan Yashal at the water, brother. <laughs> 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 continually with the godly man. That's plain and simple, man. That, ain't, that don't mean that you gotta be like, all right, I'm, I'm packing my shit and I'm moving in now. Right, right. He's <laughs> talking about you know, spending time with brothers on, on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Hey, and that's why through the Spirit, uh, Apostle Tahar said uh, we're supposed to have camp and he's supposed to fellowship at least one time with the Akim. You know, not only does it break the monotony of the week, but it also gives you time to be around the brothers. You know what I'm saying? And see, our, our, our fellowship is a closer day to Sunday. So, you know, we still got a few days to get through. So brothers might be like, hey, yo, you know, you trying to link up really real quick. You know, you usually I see Q sometime a point in the week. Q is like, dang, I feel like I ain't seen you in a minute. Because usually we have another breakthrough day at some point. But we didn't this week. But it's all through the spirit, man. Right. You know? Right. 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 This Proverbs 27 to 17. Iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friends. Mm-hmm. You know? Iron sharpens iron, man. You know? We get sharpened by each other, man. Right, right. We get built up by each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. You, you know, and that's vice versa. You mean, uh, it's the opposite. We hang around niggas in the world. You know, they're, they're spiritual leeches. You know, so when you hang around them all day, you know, you leave, you, you feel drained. Mm -hmm. You know, but with the brothers, you know, you, uh, boost it up in the spirit. That's right. And it said iron sharpeneth iron because if you have a like an iron blade and an iron sharpener, they can they, they make each other better. You know what I'm saying? They make each other better. But see, in this society, you have people are not knife and paper, rock, paper, scissors out here. You know, they're just damaging each other. But when we're around each other, you know, we, we even if a brother got to be rebuked, right? It's, 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 it shall be to him a kindness, man. You see, so the thing is, all we do is when we have, that's the beauty of those spiritual conversations. We have a spiritual conversation with a brother. You you grow. You learn something else. You know, you get more in tune with the spirit. All right now. You get more in tune with the spirit, man. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You been up to Orlando? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You Israelite, man. Uh, uh, where you from? Don't that? Mexico? Uh, is a car. Is a car. See? He's like, he's like two, like two or more uh, people. Yeah, look, look, look. Yeah, Mexican. that one. Yeah, see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, that one's our... Look, look, this one right here. He's a car. He's a char. Yeah, 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 that's you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, read, read your Bible, bro. Yeah, okay. I read the Bible. Okay. Hey, they say, the, the Bible say the color, the color of Jesus is brown. That's right. right. You yeah. see that picture? That's right, bro. That's see, right, brother. I see that. I see that. Yeah. yeah. I'm, saying, I'm saying, nah. I'm saying, read, read. Nah, you cannot read that. Yes, you do. Yep, that's right, bro. That's right, bro. It's true. It's true. Uh, uh, do you know where, where is the redemption? Say it one more time. Where is the redemption? Where is the redemption? Do you know where is the redemption? Mm, Aaron. Uh, uh, no comprende. Aaron. <laughs> Aaron, you know what he's saying? Oh, Eden. Yeah, Eden. Oh, yeah, yeah. I done. Okay. Yeah, that's in the Middle East. That was the way in the Middle East. Yep. Yep. All right, man. Shalom. All right. Shalom. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Call all y'all watching that shot. Let me plug this. It's a lock your phone about to die. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Hey, he was happy to be. Is it correct? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's how you supposed to be, bro. He like. He said, he said the Bible say the Lord is brown. 
You know what I'm saying? That's right. So why is it so hard for people to receive, man? You know, is a car out here? He rejoicing. You know. Hey, I had a pre backing up of what you were saying before. You got it, bro. This Ecclesiastes four nine, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he have not an offer to help to help him up. That's right, man. Two are better than one, man. So it's better to be linking up with brethren than to be by yourself. And it's balanced, you know, because sometimes you need some alone time in the spirit, you know, to get boosted back up, recharge, you know, whether it's like praying or you got to fast or something. Sometimes you got to do a solo mission. But for the most part, it's good to have that camaraderie around the Akim. Can somebody get for me Ephesians 4 and 16? You got something to try? I got a quick, I got a quick precept, Go ahead, man. Buddy. Just, you know, the brother, man. There's uh, uh, Romans 11 verse 1, man. I say then, have the most high cast yeah, away people, finish, the most high forbid. All right, for I also am an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And this is in Romans, man. This is the New Testament, man. The Most High hasn't forgotten his people, man. He hasn't cast away his people, man. The, 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 the world, they always trying to fight, fight. They always trying to fight against the Lord, man. Fight against the word of the Lord, saying, oh, the Israelites have done away with. Or, you know, the, 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 now all the other nations come in. That's not so, man. The Most High hasn't cast away his people, man. And it's, it's, it's good to see our brothers, man, rejoicing and knowing who they are, man. Knowing that the Lord loves them, man. Mm -hmm. Knowing that the Lord is going to deliver them out of this position, man. Mm -hmm. yeah, see, these, these, these so-called white people, they love us in this lower state, man. Our enemies love us in this lower state. They love us in having this, this nigga mindset. But the Lord sees, sees more in us, man. And, and, and see... That, see how he... How, you saw that smile on his smile face, Smile on his face, man. So that's how you know we not all here for hate. Cause. You see what I'm saying? It's just that these people, they see the hate because it's not for them. Right. Right? But this is all love when you find out that you're on this sign and you're willing to repent. Cause. You know, the brother had a beard on his face. Right, okay. You know what I'm saying? Right the brother was down there looking at the sign, crouching down, cheesing. Cause. You see, the brother was happy that he's part of the tribes, man. Hey, even you two-thirds, you should be happy that you're part of the tribes, man. But then you, 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 you niggas is rejecting your lineage. Yeah. You know, the greatest thing that's given unto man is knowing that you're an Israelite, man. Real talk, man. What 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 else? What other nation would you rather be a part of, man? Uh, you know what other nation, man? Uh, the scripture say what other nation is like the people of Israel, man? You know, and, and two thirds should be happy. He'd be like, hey, bro, I don't believe everything y'all saying, but I'm happy I'm an Israelite. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I can even respect that, bro. I believe I'm Israelite, but I don't believe in everything. All right, brother. You know what I'm saying? And that's the spirit. He put in his little. He tried to put in his little two. You know what I'm yep, saying? Yep. Hey, the Lord. Hey, yep. that could be it for him. For real, bro. That could be he showed love. Yeah. He showed love, man. Yeah. And he said, y'all got brothers up in Orlando. Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> the spirits be traveling, bro. Oh, I God. promise you. Yeah, I, I promise you, man. But uh, so Go ahead, brother. This is, uh, this is uh, Hosea chapter 1 and verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sign of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Right. That's right. You see? So this is the place where they said we're not the Israelites. This is the place where they said we're just uh, foolish men at the bottom. You know, but the Lord said in this place, we're going to be we're going to find out who we are, man. And we're going to give him praise even in our captivity. Right. You see? And, and, and that's beautiful, man. And we have the sand of the sea, man. Our people are all over the earth. You know, doing, doing, those people in the spirit are doing great works for the Lord, man. You know, you, you see, the thing is, now you're able to recognize the spirit and you see Israelite foreigners, man. You be like, damn, that's a Jake, man. You know, I, you know, usually, y'all know, I be telling y'all about the 7 Elevens. There's always Elam in there. It's a guy in there that was in the 7 Eleven today, and I took one look at him. He looked like an Elamite, but I'm like, that's a Jake. Took one look at him. You can even tell he was speaking to the cousin. Hey, how you doing, man? I'm like, that's a Jake, bro. Because Elon don't speak. No. Elon don't speak to you because they feel like they hired hired you. So I don't speak to them, man. You know, <laughs> the lady even today, I, you know, I got my, I get my little, uh, they got, by the way, they got little uh, cheese and nut packs for like $1.50. It's better than eating them fucking chips and shit. You know what I'm saying? But I, I go and grab a couple of them. You know, and the lady up there, I don't say nothing. Give, give her my stuff. Uh, you know, she give it to me back. She, she want to hand me the receipt. I just said, I ain't say nothing to her. But the other dude speaking and stuff, that's a Jake, man. You got to be able to recognize the spirit that we amongst all of these nations. Because if we weren't, Revelation 7 and 9 would not make sense. You see? 
We got to be amongst everybody, man. The Lord said he's coming to del deliver from every people and every kindred and every tongue. That means that would disprove that if, if we weren't the, uh, the nation of Israel. Kindred goes into the, uh, the descendants of the nation of Israel, man. Yep. You see? And that's true, man. I, I, there's a new lady that work at my job, man. She looked like an Elamite, but man, her whole yeah. spirit is different. The way that she looked, she got that long, flowing, like almost looking like Southern Kingdom, long black hair. You mean N.K.? Uh, Southern Kingdom. They almost look like Southern Kingdom hair that's long. You talking about N.K.? Northern Kingdom? No, <laughs> no. Nah, nah. What Southern Kingdom you talking about? Southern Kingdom, like, like the hair like, texture. The like, texture. He said long, flowy. It, 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 it looks just as thick as it, but just long. Maybe I'm tripping. You talking you know about weave on, on Southern King? <laughs> like, what you talking about? Like, besides Benjamin. Besides hair, Benjamin. Uh, like All right, bro, you got it, this. It, it almost looks like NK hair, right? But it, it's just as thick and, like, uh, body. It has a lot of body, like, uh, it has the body of a Southern. He says, SK. SK got some long hair. Benjamin. Some Benjamin. Long Benjamin. Benjamin. You see, so, hey. Judah. I ain't seen no Levites or Judites with long, flowing hair. It, 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 like it. I'm just, I'm just describing the texture, how it looks, but it was long though. I got you. It was beautiful, man. Sorry to interrupt you. Too, no, no, no. But you know, her spirit. I knew she was a J. But everybody in the building don't know that. But I treat her different because she's just a, 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 an Israelite stranger. She come from over there, so she don't really know. But just like you said, it, 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 help, it makes you realize that we are scattered amongst the nations, and a lot of mm -hmm. our people don't really know who they are. And yep. some may do, but a lot of them don't. You know. That's the beauty of this. No, 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 no. That's the beauty of this truth, man. To the 12 tribes scattered abroad. Huh. And that, like when Brother brought out back in Hosea, in the place where it says, that You are not my people, there shall be said, You are the sons of the living God. <laughs> how do we. How, how, that, what, what, what within the truth proves that scripture alone? The 12 tribes sign. That proves it. Because on one side of the sign, you got our Proverbs and bywords, what, what our oppressors call us. And on the other side of the sign, you got what the, what the Lord calls us, man. That's why the that's why the sign has what it says because this is the area where we knew where we didn't know matter of fact that we were the children of Israel man so we were identified as Negroes West Indians Haitians Dominican Guatemala Panamanian so on and so forth man okay because those are all proverbs and bywords and and that's the thing in every other captivity we knew we was Israel in Egypt we knew we was Israel in the Assyrian captivity we knew we were Israel Babylonian Media Persian Greek Roman Empire. So how come in this uh, captivity, the modern day Roman Empire, we, 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 we know ourselves as Negroes or Hispanics or Native Indians, man. But Jake don't identify as the tribes anymore, majority of Jake. You know why? Because that's prophecy, man. The Lord said that, it's also in the book of Hosea, if anyone minds getting it, the spirit allows. I got a quick one. Go, on, go ahead. It's uh, Baruch 2 and 30. For I knew that they would not hear me because it is because it is a stiff-necked people. Mm -hmm. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. That's right. This, this is a sign of that prophecy being fulfilled right before your eyes. We, here we are remembering ourselves through the spirit of power. How much you shot? How can you get around that prophecy? Right. Of Amalek are the people of the Most High. They already say that they're Israel. Yep. You see? So that, that's how you know that this is talking about another group of people who forgot their ways, who forgot their nationality, who forgot who they were, and they're getting it back and through captivity. That's right. only speaking about us, man, the so-called right. blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and Seminole Indians, man. That's right. Man, you... Nah, go ahead, bro. Go ahead, dog. Yeah. Right. Hosea chapter 3, verse 4, For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, and without a prince, and without sacrifice, and without an image, and without evolve, and without teraphim. Right, so we were gonna abide without our heritage, pretty much, you know? Go ahead. Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their power, and David their king shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. In the latter days, man. In the latter days, and this is how you know that we have the true leadership of Yahweh Bashmel Shah, because who else the spirit of Yahweh Shemeshai is setting up who King David is in the spirit. You know, who 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 the men of the Lord are coming back in the reincarnation. Who John the Baptist is. The elders and apostles of GMS, man. Come and they learn from their elders. They said we're going to seek King David in the latter days. If you can receive it through the spirit, that's King Mashah, man. Come okay, on. which is King David in the reincarnation. All right. And that was a part of, that was, we're fulfilling that prophecy right now, man. Right. You know, and we're coming back to our heritage right now. We're seeking the Lord right now, man. Before we did this lesson, who do we give all praises to, man? So that's prophecy being fulfilled right before your eyes. Can't nobody say that the scriptures is not true. 
you got it, brother. And yeah. Abba Bivens as well. Right. Elijah, you know, bringing us back into our fathers, you know. That, you know, that, it started off with him on this side. You know, and, and then that, that's when, uh, if I'm not mistaken, One West was established. Okay? And we wouldn't be here if the Lord didn't establish that. That's right. If the Lord's word didn't come to pass, we wouldn't be here. And that was prophecy too. That the was Lord prophecy. said that he was going to send his messenger, Elijah, turn the hearts of the fathers back to the sons, the Come. sons to their fathers, not to paraphrase it. That's Malachi uh, the fourth or the third chapter? Fourth. Fourth chapter, the water. Now, this is Romans chapter eight, and verse 19. The earn, for the earnest expectation of the preacher waiting for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. Now, if you read this in the NLT, it says, for all the creation is waiting eagerly for the future day when God will reveal who his children really are. Ooh, that's a baddie. That's, that's right. a baddie, brother. That's right. Wow. And and, no, you go ahead and speak, brother. I was going to say the perfection of that. Right now, the Lord is revealing who his children are. But the perfection of that scripture is when we come down from the chairs, Yahweh, New Jerusalem, ascending or descending down, all right, to take over the planet Earth in righteousness, man. And to put you devils in chains in righteousness. Quick, quick, free, quick, free, quick, free. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Habakkuk 1 verse uh, 5 and it says, Behold, he among the heathen and regard and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days which ye will not believe, though it be told you. And that and, and this that and this this marvelous work, man. See, the more and more, you know, uh we, we bring out the, the, the precepts of the uh, of the Israelite strangers, Esau Edom man, he becomes bare and bare. Alright, and these people they're be, they're becoming afraid. Because now they, but the scripture says that we were going to be as the sand of the sea, man. All right, right. <laughs> as, as the most two the stars, if I'm not mistaken. Shirt, you know, that's that's a work of the Most High. You know, this is why they were getting on uh, 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 Paul. This is why they were uh, getting on your house shot, man. Because it seemed as if he was going on uh, to the Gentiles, to the other nations, to preach the gospel. No, man, he was going to our people, man, that was scattered amongst them. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I got two scriptures real quick. One. I want to say, uh, uh, one, I want to say, uh, it was just a, a man and his child going down the street. The little boy I perceive is an Edomite. He had a, a, a JC shirt on, right? And he had a verse on the back, which was Job 13 and 16. So right, let me check it out. All right. It says, he also shall be my salvation for a hypocrite shall not come before him. That's talking about you. That's how you know these people don't understand the Bible, man. All right, is that hypocrite is the the, uh, the Edomites, man? You know, you you a hypocrite before the Lord, man. All right, but I want to get this Malachi for you. I, I know you were speaking it. This is Malachi four and five. It says, "Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord." And see, the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Why do y'all think the Messiah is coming all pretty with uh, pancakes and, and and lilies and strawberries, man? It said the great and dreadful day of the Lord. All right, but it says, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. Yep, and how did, and how did that happen? The Lord raised up Abba Bibbins, which was Elijah, okay? And he raised him up, gave him the doctrine about Israel, gave him the name, all right? And now, and then you got the doctrine all down. And, and we are the sons being returned back to our fathers, man. You know, and the fathers represent, you know, the, the, the men who established this thing. Okay, you know, uh, uh, high priest uh, King Masha, Yaiqua, Arya, uh, Mash, uh, uh, um, Abba Bivens, you know what I'm saying? And now we are returning back unto our old ways, man. Like it says, prepare yourself for the search of your fathers, man. That's right. Uh, and I don't want to touch on that hypocrite scripture, too, because Esau is a hypocrite. Huh. Go ahead, brother. This is Psalms chapter 50, uh, verse 16. But unto the wicked, the Most High said, what has thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? That's right, man. So the Lord said unto the wicked, who is known as the wicked according to the scriptures, he saw Edom. He said, what have you to do to declare my statutes, man? Or that you're going to take my covenant in your mouth, man. Go ahead. And that's, and that's another reason why you got to pay, Esau, because you decided to make the Bible the book of America. And that was all by, I think it was Ronald Reagan, he wrote a little bill to talk about how the Bible is officially the book of America. So the Lord is like, okay, you want to take my covenants in your mouth? Let's see if you put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. Verse 17, seeing 
that thou hatest instruction and casteth my words behind thee. When thou sawest a thief, then thou consented with him and hast been partaker with adulterers. That's right. Thou givest thy mouth to do evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Go ahead. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother, and thou slanderest thine own mother's son. Yep. The things that hast thou done, and I kept silence. Though, though thoughtest that I altogether, such as one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Yeah, I'll pause, man. So bouncing off what the brother just brought out about uh, uh, the Lord putting the spirit on Abba Bivens, that was a part of him setting us in order before Esau's eyes, man. All right, the, the, the apostles, they give out the testimony that when the school was first, like when one West was first in order, uh, they would send agents to the school with briefcases full of money. You know what I'm saying? You know, how much? How much to stop teaching this truth, man? They even gave that other testimony. They said the dudes walked by and was like, hey, uh, how did y'all find out? Right. Yeah. We paid a lot of money to keep this a secret. How did y'all find out? Yep. The Holy Spirit. That's right. And y'all got to understand that Yahweh is the Jake of Jakes, man. The king of Jake, man. Yep. Yaiqua, man. So he yaiqua with the Holy Spirit. Something you wouldn't expect to come in and supplant you, man. You see, they, they like, damn, like, they thought they was keeping it pumped down. It said they would make the name of Israel be no longer in remembrance. So now the Lord, like, all right, I got to throw, throw one in there where they can't, that, that'll overcome them. See, that's why they come, the scriptures say he's speaking to a prophet in a dream. That's why it's hard for them to receive that when uh, Abba Bivens was giving dreams about the, uh, the, the tribes and about uh, the uh, Lashawan Kodash, why they can't understand it. He's speaking to prophet. That's the way that the Lord speaks to his men. You see, but wicked men can't understand that, man. That's right. And, and they're surprised because look, look how much effort that they use, time and resource. They they get you from birth. They stick you with needles. All right. And then when you're a child, as an adolescent growing up, you're watching television. You watch a blue clues or whatever's on TV. That's madness. All right. Then you go to their schools. All right. They, they you not they have you eight hours out of the day. Then you come home and watch more TV and to more madness, all right? Then you go to bed, so it's an everyday. They spend a lot of time and money. Middle school, high school, college, music, movies, all these, they spent a lot of time and resources to make sure that you don't get it. And still we got it. Yep. I got a priest in the back of the brother up. Numbers 12 and verse six. And he said, hear now my words, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision I will speak unto him in a dream. That's a, that's a, that's done daughter right there, man. Uh, the Lord says, if, if it's a prophet among you, I will speak to him in a vision and a dream. So that's how you know people don't understand scriptures, man. Now, granted, in, uh, when you read Ecclesiastes, it says dreams lifteth up fools, but you got to be able to discern what's a dream from the Most High and what's a dream of folly. All right, because when brothers have dreams, you are man. Like I've had dreams, I wake up and I'm like, you know, in the spirit, I'm like, what the fuck was that? You know, I just knew that. I'm like, that was wicked. That wasn't of the Lord. You see what I'm saying? E ultimately, everything is of the Lord. But you knew it wasn't something that it wasn't righteous. It wasn't the Lord telling you to oh, uh, go and do this. Go, go and uh, follow uh, Salakia. Oh. Go, and, go and follow the left hand side of something. You know, you, you had a dream that you shaved your beard off. You know, or you had a dream that you was eating pork. You don't go out and follow that demon. All right, but dreams that was righteous, you'd be like, oh man, that was a faith booster. That was a testimony, you know? Yep, I got a precept. Hold on, hold on, hold on. go ahead, pray the word now. God, Sirach, Ecclesiastes 34 and 1, the hopes of a man void of understanding are vain and false, and dreams lifteth up fool. That's right. Whoso regardeth dreams is like him that catcheth at a shadow and follows after the wind. That's right. Who, who, hey, who did that, man? Who, uh, chasing the shadow, following after the wind, you, it's for nothing. It's vanity. Go ahead. The vision of dreams is the resemblance of one thing to another, even as the likeness of face to, to face, mm -hmm. of a face to a face. Mm -hmm. Sirach Ecclesiastes uh, 34 and 4, of an unclean thing, what can be cleansed? Of a what thing that is, which is false, what truth can come? Divinations and soothsayings and dreams are vain, and the heart fancieth as a woman's heart in travail. If they be not sent from the Most High in thy visitation, set not thy heart upon them. You see, if it ain't from the Most High in thy visitation, don't set your heart upon it. And you have Christians love to do this. God sent me a message. He sent me a dream. God and they, said, hey, but God that's when dreams. you go into Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter. It says he did not send them. Right. He said, yet they spake and yet they walk. And I have not commanded them, nor have I sent them, man. Right. I believe Jeremiah 14 and 14 and 23 and 21 says that, man. 
You see, these people don't understand what the Heavenly Father is about. So they'll get a dream and think that that was the Lord. But that was really the Lord trying to throw you off his trail. Yeah. He don't want you to come unto him. So he sent you a dream to go do something wicked, man. And how do we, how do we discern whether or what, 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 if your dreams are of the most high or not? Via the scriptures, man. Yep. We have one high priest. We have a mediator. You know, so so through the spirit, if you know the the the, the elder he uh, had that dream, how do we know if it's true or not? How do we believe if the dream is true? The scriptures, right. the spirit of the Lord. All right, our spirit is in the scriptures. All right, when it speaks of the tribes, it's in the scriptures. That's right. So this is how we know that the, that that everything that happened is true via the scriptures. We have one high priest, one mediator. I got that one in Jeremiah. Hey, uh, you on twenty three? Uh, uh, the point is 21, but start at 16. Uh. Uh, this is Jeremiah 23, verse 16. says, Thus saith the Lord, the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart. You see, that's what they do. They speak a vision of their own heart. Just like Martin Luther King, man. All right? They speak a vision of their own heart. Now, the, the Lord don't want uh, it's complete integration of all the nations, man. That's not a part of his will. But a uh, church pastor will tell you that in a second, man. Martin, Martin Luther Queen uh, will tell you that in a second. What was uh, uh, Martin Luther King's real name? Malcolm or something like that? His name wasn't even Martin Luther King. Michael, the water. Michael. His name ain't even Martin, man. Go ahead, bro. It says, they speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Not out of the mouth of the Lord, man. All right, and how do you start with the mouth of the Lord? First of all, the Lord got to put his spirit on you and then read out of these scriptures. That's how you uh, have the mouth of the Lord, man. All right, you can't just have them. You just got a mouth if you ain't got the mouth of the Lord, man. Go ahead, bro. Verse 17, they say still unto them that despise me, the Lord have said, ye shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of, their, of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. That's church. That's church wrapped up in the scripture. One on one. <laughs> one on one. They never bring this scripture out in church because they always talking about peace. All right. But the Lord said, nah, and not, not so, man. Go ahead. Verse 18. For who, for who have stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived and heard his word? Who have marked his word and heard it? Mm -hmm. Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is going forth in fury. Even a grievous whirlwind, it shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. And see that when it comes down to it, those uh, those missiles, that judgment, them chariots, they all about to get down uh, on judgment on this place, man. You know, and no matter how much you disagree with that, no matter how much you got a problem with that, Yahweh Shemel Shah is gonna execute His word, man. Right. Upon the head of the wicked, man. That's right. That's right. This is beautiful, man. And the Lord is raising up uh, 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 the bear. He's raising up uh, uh, the yep. other house of Esau, Edom, to come against them, man. Yep. This is beautiful, man. And that we know we, we we this close into the end, man. This close. We are really close. That's right. We are really close. Man. That's right. Go ahead, bro. Verse 20, it says, The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, you shall consider it perfectly. <laughs> See, I was just doing a lesson last night about the anger and the indignation of the Lord, man. He ain't going to hold back no anger this time, man. He about to, you know, just like when the Lord uh, obliterated the earth with water, man. You know, he ain't going gonna to let all these missiles, all that anger. And when, and when he give us our new bodies, when Howard Shah come, he going to let out all of his wrath, man. You know, he going to, you know, when somebody get mad, their eyes turn bloody. He going to have that bloody spirit, man, just to destroy these people. It says they going to consider it perfectly. Then they're going to be like, damn, those dudes said this. They said these bad things were going to happen, man. You won't consider it perfectly in these times to come that you were being wicked and a reprobate and disobeying the law, statutes, and commandments, and even the grace of the Lord. That's the thing. Christians always like to talk about the grace of the Lord and we not under the law, right? Y'all even disobeying his grace. Y'all taking it as a cloak for maliciousness. You're taking this grace in vain, man. Go ahead, bro. Verse 21, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. See, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. So I mean, when, and that's what the Lord said. That's one thing to send somebody. But they, they took off. You know, they took off with their wickedness. Lord, I ain't even sending them, man. 
You know, so what they just run in their lips now, man. And the scriptures say, and uh, what's that? Habakkuk. It says uh, so that he may that read it, they may run. Right. So when you read these scriptures and knowledge, wisdom, understanding, you run through the spirit. But these men and these these so-called Christian pastors, they're leading you all astray, man. Tell you about peace and prosperity is coming to America. That's a lie, man. War and judgment is coming to the streets of America very soon, man. Yeah. And you people are too foolish to recognize it. You proud. You got it, bro. Jeremiah 28 and 8, the prophets that has been before me and before the of old prophesied both against many countries and great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. See, so that, 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 that's what the true prophets of Yahweh Bashem al is going to be prophesying about. War, even of, uh, war, evil, and of pestilence. All right, these Christian pastors out here, they're, they're telling you peace and prosperity. All right, uh, uh, America is going, to, is going to be better. Hey, that's that's not what it says according to the scriptures. All right. That's right. And why are those prophets prophesying that? Because that's what's coming, man. You know, peace is not coming until the destruction comes first, man. It tells that in Second Ezra. Uh, it talks about how the evil is soon, but until the evil is fulfilled, it won't be. You know that scripture, my Alcala? If you find it, brother, that'll be your problem. But that's what's coming, man. The evil has to come to pass first. That uh, nigga Rick Ross said that. He said, this was back when Trump was in office, he said, I'm, I'm happy Donald Trump is the president because we got to destroy it before we elevate, man. And that's facts. Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. Well, you know, we, we see it in, 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 on the right-hand side, but he was probably talking about the left-hand side because he works for them. Yep. Yep. <laughs> hey, I need the water? I think water. Uh, oh, my y'all call him. It's, uh... Matthew 4, I mean, 2nd Ezra 4, starting at verse 28. Whoever got it first, we'll drop the spirit. 4 and 8. 4 and 28. 2nd Ezra. Oh, and this 2nd Ezra is 4 and verse 28. And it reads, But as concerning the things whereof thou hast asked, thou hast asked me, I will tell thee. For the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. Right, the evil is sown, but the destruction isn't come yet, man. How do we know the evil is sown? Look around you. This place is full of wickedness, man, and evil. You know? But the destruction ain't come yet because we're still here. Go ahead. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that it is like it. Then can then cannot it come that is sown which is which good? Right. Which good? I'm gonna read that again. Yeah, go ahead, I'm read that again. <laughs> Second Ezra 4 and 29. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down, and if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, then cannot it come that is sown with good. That's right. And the brother said something spiritual yesterday. We was at fellowship. He's saying there can only be one winner, man. So if Esau is a rulership, then we got to be on the bottom. If we on top, then Esau got to be on the bottom, man. Right. And I'd rather, I'd rather we be the ones on top, man. You know, through the spirit. And that's what has to happen. Esau has to be destroyed before Yahweh Shai's kingdom gets set up, man. Yahweh Shai said it to Pontius Pilate, my kingdom is not from this world. You know, if, if, if it were, my servants will fight, man. That's right, right. I love that picture that's been out, a uh, little cartoon with Esau looking at that wall and Jake looking at it, yeah. smiling, looking at the, the moon, I mean, the uh, sun and the mountains. I love that. that. It's so spiritual, man. And Esau looked at just doom and gloom, man. And that's what's coming, you know? Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followed, man. That's what's coming to America, man. And that, we happy. We happy. We rejoicing, man. Hey, be, hey. It's here. Fear not, man. Rejoice. Yeah, you should be happy, man. If you're not happy, you're not in the right spirit. They don't even know. Being happy about prophecy is a beautiful thing, man. Because we, we got a sure word of prophecy. We know what's going to happen. That's the thing. All, these, all of you people go around. Y'all will pay all of this money to, to uh, school teachers. Y'all will pay all this money to your pastors. Y'all will pay all this money for psychics. All right? All these things. When you want to know what's about to happen in, in this world, all you got to do is come out here and ask us. We'll tell you, man. We know through the scriptures, the Lord has given us the understanding to know what's about to happen in America. We know martial law is coming. We know you people are to take RFID chips. We know what's about to happen in this place. But the people are too foolish 
to, and too uh, proud to ask the questions, man. And then when you do ask questions, you ask the wrong questions, man. Ask them proper questions, and even in school. They always say, ain't no such thing as a dumb question. That's a damn lie. Say, avoid, foolish avoid foolish questions and endless genealogies, man. You know, we got this psychic place across the street, and I know people go there, and it, it seems like women go there. Yo, instead of asking, you should ask them, right? If they know everything, look, instead of them telling you if your man is cheating or not, they should be telling you that this place is getting ready to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. But they not, because they don't know shit. That bitch ain't never open on Sunday. That bitch never open on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Better not be, she said. Tell her she a witch. She ain't telling nobody that judgment is coming upon this place. Hell no, because that, if, if, if people that's trying to, that's the thing, that's the beautiful part about not trying to get money from people. Because when you're trying to get finances, uh, uh, there's one in Titus. Uh, give me uh, uh, Titus 1 and 10, if I'm not mistaken. When you're trying to get filthy lucre, when you're trying to get finances from people, you're not going to tell them the truth. Because when you do that, you got to keep the lie coming so you can keep the money coming in. You see? You can't, you can't tell people the truth because if you told people the truth and you were trying to get money, they're going to leave. I'm like, oh, I know, I know the truth already, so I'm done. Go ahead, bro. Titus 1 and 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Right, and this is speaking about Israel, of course, but nonetheless, this applies to all of these wicked people. These people are unruly. These people are deceivers, man. Devils. Right? Go ahead. Verse 11. Whose mouth must be stopped. Whose mouth must be stopped, man. You know? And I, I told the brothers one time when I first came into the truth, I was, yeah, it was like, I, I couldn't have been in the truth for maybe a month, two months. But it's the night before, I woke up like, man, I'm about to go see a psychic tomorrow. That's what I said. I'm like, I don't know what I was thinking at the time. But the next day, I woke up and I couldn't speak. You see? So the Lord stopped my mouth the same way how he, how he stopped the lion's mouths when Daniel was in there. He's going to stop these people's mouths real soon, man. Go ahead, brother. Whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, mm -hmm. teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. Teaching things that you ought not for filthy lucre's sake. What is filthy lucre? Uh, f finances and money, man. People just want to do anything for their own belly. How much money can we get from you? We don't never got no pots and change buckets out here. Because the scripture says, freely you have received, freely give. We give this word freely, man. We don't have to get up and get your money. That's how you know we don't truly want anything. We just want you to know the words of the Heavenly Father and what's about to happen in this place. We don't care about your money. We don't care about your finances. We don't care how rich you are. We don't care how poor you are, man. We're here for truth's sake, man. John 8 and 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. See? But these people going to these psychics, they, they, they don't do that. They want to keep your mind in bondage so you can keep coming in and giving them finances, man. We aren't built off of finances, man. We're built off of truth. And Yahweh Shai, man, a firm foundation in our Lord. You see? And I, I think that might have been a point, but you can check and see. Oh, you got a precept? You can bring that out. I think that was a point. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, brother. Uh, Malachi chapter uh, 3 and verse 5. And I will come near to you to judgment. Mm. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, mm -hmm. the widow and the fatherless, and th that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear me not, saith the Lord of hosts. That's right. So the Lord, he says, he's near to you in judgment. He's going uh, that these psychics, they're sorceresses, man. All right. These uh, witches and warlocks. These people have you in a trance, man. All these women out now performing witchcraft, all right, using the stones for the wrong reasons. Even uh, uh, one of these uh, uh, demonic rappers, what's the, uh, he's part of with Tyler Creator and them. But he got a, his new album cover, got a piece of, got like a bundle of sage on there, man. You know he's dealing with a wicked woman that's a witch, man. And when you read Exodus 22 and 18, it says, suffer not a witch to live. You see, but these people don't follow this Bible. They don't believe in this Bible. They're sorcerers, man. Involved in sorcery and enchantments and witchcraft, and that's what they're doing to these people in the churches, man. That's witchcraft. Uh, Biblical shot, give me Micah 3 and 11. That's witchcraft in them churches, man. they just telling you whatever they got to do to keep you coming back to take your money. they telling you that a false, a false god, they're telling you the wrong name, they're telling you that he's here for peace and prosperity when he's coming to, to judge terribly the earth, man. That's what the Lord is coming to do, he's coming to save his elect. 
which are the uh, one third of the nation of Israel, and you other people are going to be destroyed for your wickedness, man. Right. You got it, brother? Come on, this is Micah 3, verse 11. The heads thereof judge for reward, mm -hmm. and the priests thereof teach for hire. That's what the, 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 your pastors are doing in these churches. You had, they had a dude put uh, Joe Osteen to the side the other day, and he said, hey, you know you're a piece of shit, right? And Joe Osteen started laughing right. because he know he is, man. He's just lying to you people, man. He's doing whatever he can for money. What'd you say? That's definitely you curse. Okay, so are we going to get it? Give me a uh, rude, rude in speech. So the thing is, when it comes to the Bible, people read the word cursing, right? To curse someone means to put a curse on someone, all right? Those are just expletives. The Heavenly Father, the heavenly, the heavenly Father does not, because uh, what is shit? Shit is just feces, all right? It, it, uh, uh, ass is a buttocks, right, or a donkey. Those are just expletives. The Heavenly Father, as long as you're serving him, he does, that doesn't bother him, you know? Huh? Like That's right. Go ahead and read the rule. Got the rule in speech. Second Corinthians 11 and 6. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. Though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. So I might sound rude and might have hard speech, but that doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about. Quick example. Real one more thing, sir. Let me ask you something real quick. If you were drowning in the water, you were drowning in the ocean, right? And I said, uh, hey, man, if I threw you a raft, and I said, hey, man, get on that motherfucking raft or you're going to fucking die. Are you going to grab the raft? Yes. You don't care how I spoke to you, right? Because obviously I'm here to save your life. So it doesn't matter how I said it. No matter if I came, if I didn't have to say, hey, sir, here's a raft for you. That's going to say, I don't have to say that. Get your dumb ass on that motherfucking raft. You out there drowning. You're going to grab that raft, man. So what we're trying to do is save people's lives. It's not about how we say it. You got to understand and receive the message that we're trying to deliver, that the Heavenly Father is sending his son back to judge and destroy people and to save his hopeful elect. That's the important message. So don't get caught up on the hard speech, the rough words. You see, that's, that's what they don't teach you in church. In church, they'll say using ass and shit is a curse word. And when, 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 when you go into, hey, give me uh, Alicia when cursing in the name of the Lord. The scriptures say the men of the Lord, prophets, cursed in the name of the Heavenly Father. So if he did that, that means it's okay with what we're doing. And yeah, we can put curses up on people too. That's right. Isaiah 54 and 18 also says that we're going to condemn them in judgment. Right? Say that again? I'm I kind of confused on what you said. Anybody hear him clearly? All right, go ahead and read that, brother. Alicia. Second Kings chapter two, starting at verse um, twenty-three. It says, And he went up from thence unto Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou ball head, go up, thou ball head. Mm -hmm. And he turned back and looked on them and curse them in the name of the Lord. That's right. This is Alicia cursing children. <laughs> cursing children. It's not even grown men. He's cursing children in the name of the Lord, man. Uh, you know, bears the vow of the children. <laughs> you know, cursing children in the name of the Lord, man. You see, this is, this is what it comes down to. And so that's how you know people don't read the Bible, man. People do not read this Bible. They, they hear curse word. Next, you know, he, he was after that, that's when he was cut. He was listening to everything else. As soon as the curse word come out, they want to skedaddle. You see, many people do that. Ain't many people, man. It ain't for them. It ain't for them. Go ahead. You got it, bro. Sirach chapter 3, verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and, a, and an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. You got it, bro. See? You know, that. instead of questioning us what we're actually preaching about, they just hear the word fuck, and then they just walk off. <laughs> who, would, who would you rather have a... Uh, 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 a Christian pastor tell you smooth words, but he's lying to you, or are you rather somebody, you know, say ass, shit, fuck, but telling you the truth? <laughs> hey, there, there's a study that says people that use expletive words are more likely to be truthful people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you know it's true. Like what? That means they're not holding back from you, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, somebody that's, uh, the scriptures talk about Esau being a uh, forked tongue and silver tongue. You know, you know. Uh, Proverbs 30 says they, they want us to uh, get actually let's get that. I mean Proverbs Isaiah 30 and 9 you see they want those smooth words man because that's what Esau taught them in them churches hey come get the smooth words and we can get your smooth dollars because the smoother they talk the easier you come up out them pockets right. you right. see they so used to that image that Esau even put out that 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 uh, uh, Caesar Bozier shining in the background I'm so pure in my son. Yep. And they're like, nah, man. <laughs> no, the Lord was rough. Yep. The Lord, as, as it's written in the scriptures, the Lord was, was an austere man. Mm -hmm. 
warlike. Yep. And they always have Chesy with that long hair. Yes. When you know 1 Corinthians 11, I mean, 1 Corinthians 11 and 14, talking about it's a shame. Right. You see, you don't find no pictures of Chesy with short hair. You see what I'm saying? Which makes it more feminine. All right. And men of war didn't have long hair. Men of war will have shorter hair because you, if you can, man, what, what do women do when they get in a fight? Right. First thing they do is grab your hair, man. So that's how you know the Messiah didn't have no long hair dra draping down his neck. You see? I seen the dude get his ass hooked because the dude grabbed his dress. Grab that, hey, grab that hair. It's, it's over. Right. Grab them dreads, man. You Because your whole, hey, that's why the scriptures talk about, uh, 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 who is that? Rebecca got lifted up with the vehemency of his right. strength. It's, imagine having short hair and the angel just pull you up like that. So if you got long hair, your, your neck going every which kind of way, man. Or, uh, what was it, Absalom? <laughs> Absalom? Absalom too. Got caught up in the trees. You see? So, hey, man, that, that, this is a spiritual thing, man. But you, you it always says he got that long, effeminate hair, man. The, the Messiah does not going to have long hair. That's how you know everything they teach to you is a lie about the Messiah. Right. <laughs> they'll, they'll give us a hard time, but they'll turn a blind. Our people will turn a blind eye to all the evil and wickedness Esau Edom is doing. Mm -hmm. Bombing countries, killing people, all right, feeding people poison. Poisoning, they turn a blind eye to all of that. They can, in their eyes, the so-called white man can do no wrong. Yep, yep. But we say <laughs> one expletive, oh, oh, y'all, y'all teacher hate, oh, I, I got to get out of here. It's like, <laughs> come on, man. Mm-hmm. They, they not of God. They, they said fuck. Right. <laughs> See? Which is an acronym. Yep, it is, that's right. Fornication under the king's consent. Rough paraphrase. Mm. Right. See? <laughs> these, these people don't understand the heavenly father. They don't know the most high. So y'all don't even know, you know what I'm saying? It, we, you got some parents that allow their children to use expletives, and some parents don't, right? You can come on. You, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, some parents allow their children to use expletives. And the Heavenly Father just so happened to be a power that allow us to use explicit words, man. If you if you, if you think a, a, a master would care about a servant, if that servant is your best servant, but he got rough language. This servant do everything that you ask him to do, but because of you, the way he talked, you like, oh, well, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have him around me. Nah, man. He's a servant. He ate. Hey, when I ask him to go to the store, he goes to the store. When I ask him to watch my children, he watch my children. When I ask him to clean up, he clean up. You know, but when he come around, he be like, man, you know, that shit was hard as fuck. Nah, the dude don't care about that, man. He want to know if your, your amount of servitude, man, the, 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 the sacrifice that you're making for his word, man. And you know he's going to be able to get, his, get your point across to the other servants. Yep. Get them in That's line. right. <laughs> and there are expletives in the scriptures, man. Right. Your ass is in the Bible. So if ass is in the Bible, why we can't say it? That's foolishness, man. Plantation Christianity. Right. Too long, man. Too long. They drunk. These people are drunk. The scriptures say that these people are drunk, but not with wine. These people are drunk, man. You people are faded on wickedness. Yo, go ahead. You no, got no, it, bro. No, yeah, no I'll speak. No, these people are hypocrites, though. You know, they, they, they're, they're uh, demonize us, you know, for saying a curse word. But go, go in the car and start listening to music, and it, right. it got curse words and every other. Every other. Along too. Yeah. And that's worse because they think it's wrong. You see, <laughs> they're in the work. We, we know that it's OK, but they think the curse words are wrong. But then they go and bang it out, playing it in front of their children, all of that kind of yeah, stuff. Man. And you think it's wrong. <laughs> You're being a hypocrite, man. <laughs> this, uh, this is the book of Mark, chapter one. I'm going to start at 21. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. Mm -hmm. See, he, he taught with authority. They even said that his, his, uh, he, uh, he has the voice of many waters. All right, and when he went in the synagogue, when they was uh, selling in, uh, when they was selling in the temple. Talo Yehudi. Go ahead, bro. When he, when he was selling in the, when they were selling uh, and doing wickedness in the temple, he, he, was, he was grabbing the wits and beating their ass, man. All right, he was, he, he was, you know. More than likely, he was cursing at him, man. He wasn't saying he all shouldn't do that and beating their ass. He was probably cursing their ass out, man. Yep, upbraiding them. Going in, bro. And that's it's also, when you're in an authority position, you speak how you want. You know what I'm saying? When you, hey, there, there's something they call, you got fucking money. Right? Which you can, you gonna say, you got so much money, you can say what's actually is on your mind. Donald Trump. Donald Trump, dude, he don't hold back. Right. You see what I'm saying? So if Donald Trump don't got to hold back, you think your house shot got to hold back? You know, nah, bro. He was in there going in, flipping tables. You motherfucking niggas. You know, he wasn't saying niggas, but, you know, he could have been. He could have been. 
niggas in the niggas in the scripture. You motherfucking niggas in here, man. You know, flipping tables, going in, whipping them. You fucking get the fuck out of here. You know, going in, bro. You got it. This is Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-eight. And it came to pass when Yahweh Shah had ended these saying, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. See authority. See uh, again, our people been uh, uh, deceived by you know these pastors in church. No, when you come out here, we're gonna speak to you according to how the scripture, man. Have an authority, man. Pastors, they smooth, bro. Yeah. They be like, how you doing today, brother? How how are you? You know what I'm saying? You can, don't go on to the front. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Get some seat in the front because you know you got bread. You yep. know you finna break them off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they, they, that's the thing about, about tides too. The, the whole, their whole uh, um, board knows about who tithes and how much right. in the church. Right. See, that's the thing, man. When, when it comes to your church, now it's, it's good to know, you know, being open about tithing, you know, being transparent. That's always good, man. But the thing is, when it comes to, they, you don't got to know how much each brother tithe, though. Hey, yo, that, that brother's doing 200. That brother's doing 300. You ain't got to do that. But in the church, they be wanting to know who the breadwinners are so they know who to coerce. You see? And a bar had it down. That's how you know, hey, man, we was raising them churches. Bar had it down. Man, come on, sit over here, brother. That's how they be, man. Come on, get that brother a front seat. Got a reserved parking spot. I done peeped in the back office while they counting that money, boy. They... Yep, yep. <laughs> yep, yep. They counting, boy. I be like, damn, boy, they look wicked, man. I got to look, think back on it. That's right, and they teach for hire. Yes, you see, out. that's not in names. Wait, whoa, is the second one? Yeah, that's right, brother. That's the name of the heavenly Father. But his son's name is Yahweh Shai. That's right, brother. Ephraim. Okay, okay, that's right, brother. Call all y'all by Shemel Shai. Hey, it's Yahweh Shai. Remember that. Yahweh Shai. All right, brother. Hey, call all y'all by Shemel Shai. That's what the first one he said. Yes, one he said Yahweh. Hold up. You know what I'm saying? You gotta stop. You hold it, son. You know. And then he said, yeah, how was I? You know, so through the spirit, he going he gonna to look into that because a man like that don't just say stuff like that. He's going to look at you. How was I? He's going to be like, hey, maybe that is the name. And see, now we had Issachar and Ephraim come out today, man. You see? The spirit of the northern tribe is coming. That's man. right. He said, yeah, how Hey, man, that, that name stopped you in your tracks, man. <laughs> hold on, yeah, how Hold on, brother. Hold on, stop. Because they, they know the spirit that comes behind them. That's right, man. It, it ain't it ain't just no any it, the scriptures say he said have a name above all names man when you hear the true name of the heavenly father and the true name of his son you gotta stop man because the scriptures say in malachi the first chapter that is dreadful to the heathen man that's a powerful name man all right so it, it stops you you know what i mean I, I, it's warm i got a little chill man that name of the lord will get you man you know uh read your isaiah 30 real quick all right this is isaiah 30 and verse 9 that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that would not hear the law of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Which, that's our people. Two thirds of our people are lying children, which will not hear the law of the Lord. Man, we try to tell them the law of the Lord, and they 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 turn us, they turn away. They don't want to hear the law of the Lord. And so Proverbs twenty eight nine it says, "Your prayer shall be an abomination if you turn your ear from hearing the law." Man, uh, all right, we already know you going into slavery, Esau. Go ahead. Are you guys going to be my master? Yep. That's right. Call all y'all about to be my shot. Yep, yep, yep. No, you're going to be in the field. Yeah. Uh, Jesus. Hey, she old demon. I don't know if y'all remember her. I remember she an old demon. Yeah, so she's going to be in the field. You know what I'm saying? And she's she, she going to be in the field. She going to be in the field. So she, she, she gonna be in the field. You know what I'm saying? She, she, you know, she going to be in the fields, bro. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Verse <laughs> Jeremiah 30 and 10. Isaiah. Oh, it's, uh, it's like Isaiah 30 and 10. We say to the seers, see not, mm -hmm. and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, mm -hmm. speak to us smooth things, prophesy deceit. Right, and that's what two thirds of our people want to hear. They don't want to hear us tell them that you're going to get put to death if you don't start serving the Lord. They don't want to hear that uh, bad things are coming to America. They want to hear smooth things. They want to hear deceit. They want to hear, they want to go into church because church make you feel good. It's a fashion show. They're there to take your money. You all the women walking around. You see, but we don't. Y'all don't want to hear. Hey, yo, the Lord gonna do something terrible unto you. They don't want to hear that. But if you don't repent, that's what's gonna happen, man. All right, Isaiah. Uh, what's that? Sixty six. Uh, Isaiah sixty five and uh, twelve goes into how the Lord said He gonna choose your fears. He gonna choose your delusions, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. They don't want to hear that. Yeah, you can pull that out. Isaiah 65, verse 12, it says, Therefore will I number you to the sword. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear that. Number to the sword? That means you're going to get killed, man. Go ahead, brother. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When the Lord called, you didn't answer. The Lord is calling y'all every week. Dialing up your phone telling you, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that you're the Israelites. You're the people that went through the Red Sea. Y'all, y'all, y'all those people, man. Get it through your skulls. You're not black. We different shades of brown. You're not niggas. You're not coons. You're not spits. You're not wetbacks. You're the children of the Most High, man. Go ahead, brother. Because when I called, ye did not answer. Mm -hmm. When I spake, ye did not hear. Mm -hmm. So but he said, when I spake, ye did not hear. How does the Lord speak? The Lord said he will speak by, the, by his prophets. He will speak by his men. He's not cutting off his throne for nobody, man. Amos 3 and 7 says he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And you people don't hear. You don't listen. You keep walking up the street. So when he comes to judge his place, he's going to be doing it in righteousness because he warned you first. Go ahead, bro. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes and did choose death, wherein I delighted not. Mm-hmm. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, my servants. No, that was the one. What was the one? Uh, I shall choose your fears. Does that say 66? 66, 66 and 4. 66 and 4. Yeah, get that one for me. But the Lord said, he, you, 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 he, you did evil before his eyes and did the things in which he delighted not. Go ahead and get that Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66 and 4 says, I also will choose their delusions. Yep. And will this is God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is the most high we're talking about. He said, I'm going to choose their delusions. Right? Go ahead, brother. And will bring their fears upon them. Where's this sweet God that y'all talking about? He said he's going to bring fears upon you, man. You people don't know the Heavenly Father. He, he destroyed the whole earth by water. Why do y'all think he's not someone to be feared, man? Go ahead, brother. Because when I called, none did answer. They ain't going to call him again. The Lord called you another time, and you didn't answer. Go ahead. When I spake, they did not hear, mm -hmm. but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. That's right. The Lord constantly calling, man. Brothers, the apostles have been out there for decades, man, warning you people. We're out here for years, warning you people, telling you. So you can't say you ain't here, man. We're in the same spot every week, man. You getting dialed up every week by the Heavenly Father to repent. And you people refuse to, refuse to repent. Y'all keep eating y'all pork. You keep uh, being adulterous. You women keep having sex with multiple men at one time. You men out here being sodomites and homosexuals. The Heavenly Father is not okay with this, man. That's right. He must be a sodomite. He turned around, man. You see? We live in... Hey, when you read Revelation 11, 8, it says this place is going to be spiritually Sodom and Egypt. You have homosexuals running rampant, transgenders. We can't even tell if a man is a woman or a woman is a man anymore. This place is wicked, man. And the Heavenly Father is going to destroy this place by new thermonuclear missiles. That's right. Period, man. Go ahead, bro. This is Luke 13 and 5. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Okay, and what's, what's true repentance? Coming back unto the Lord. Start uh, acknowledging your offense. Uh, uh, asking the Lord for forgiveness. Coming back unto your heritage. Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. That's how you repent. And these churches, they don't tell you how to repent. Okay? But th that's why the true men of the Lord are out on the highways and byways. Okay? Cause, because, uh, because you have to know how to repent. Mm -hmm. right? If you don't repent, the Lord says, you shall surely perish. Mm -hmm. hey, that's a beautiful point, bro. The churches don't teach you how to repent. They don't even show you. They don't say, hey, this is what you need to do to repent. Hey, just be good. Show people love. They don't show you what to do. To, what does repentance mean, man? What is the standard for how to repent? What are we supposed to do? The blueprint is all here, man. Everything that you need to know to be saved out of this place is in this Bible. Right. Everything that you need. The Lord gave you all the tools for the job. But if you're a fool going to go to the job and not use the tools, then you're foolish. It's on you. You see? You got it, bro. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 16 but they mocked the messengers of the Most High and despised his word and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. Mm -hmm. See? And that's what we see, man. They, they, they mocked the word. 
what's in the scriptures, man? Mm -hmm. All right. Also, they misuse the prophets. You got all, hey, you got every, all the brothers around major cities around America, man. And you still, and you people still, all right, don't know the skin color of, of your house shop. For real. For real. They, 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 they walk by every day. They're not considering that we're speaking out the Bible. They think that we're speaking out of our own hearts. We're speaking out of the Bible. But they, yet they'll walk by, scoff, laugh. Take and while they're scoffing and laughing, Russia is rising up. That's right. China is rising up. Mm -hmm. Economic collapse is, 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 is rearing its head. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 what is it? Uh, inflation is increasing. While you're laughing at us, your kingdom is going down. Right. Hey, hey. So keep laughing. Hey, it say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That's right. But get, we say the names every week. <laughs> and you <laughs> people still don't know the names, <laughs> man. They say he that running into it is safe. Yep. Bro, that's the loudest thing we say it can. When, at the beginning and the end, that's the loudest thing, man. So you, it's being heard, bro. I had a scripture in Zech Zechariah that I wanted to get because you, you made me think of something, brother. So uh, give me one. This is uh, Zechariah 14 and 9. It says, uh, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day there shall be one Lord and his name one. You see, hey, man, the heavenly father got one name. His son got one name. And if you call on false names, you're not going to be saved in a time of trouble, man. Right. Uh, a troubling time is coming to the streets of America. Y'all, right. like the brother said, you're, you're seeing hyperinflation. All of your goods are costing more. Your gas costs more. Your food costs more. Your water's going to cost more. Everything's going to keep going up. And this place is going to collapse very soon, man. And all you people calling on false gods, you're not going to be saved in these last days, man. Right. Great, terrible things are going to happen in the streets of America. But see, the thing is, these people think it's too far from them because they see it on TV and overseas. It's going to be at your doorstep really soon, man. Uh, can somebody give me uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 2? It's going to be at your doorstep really soon, man. All right? It ain't nothing you're going to be able to do about it if you ain't got the Lord on your side, man. You're going to need the Lord because if you don't got the Lord, you're going to be uh, open and accessible to his judgment. Go ahead, you can bring your precept. The second Ezra 16, I'm gonna start at 19. Behold, which means to look, famine and plague and tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. All right, you look up the scourges, that's an instrument of, of, of an instrument used for punishment. All right, so famine, that's that's a part of the Lord's punishment. All right, and it says anguish. All right, let's read verse 20. But for for these, it's like it for but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. All right, and we still we seeing that today. We're like the brother was saying, it's hyperinflation. All right, uh, um, food prices going up. All right, it's the wars, the rumors of wars. It was just over forty earthquakes that happened in twenty four hours span. For our people looking at. Huh? Tornadoes. Oh, there's tornadoes. tornadoes in the Midwest. Are people actually looking at this and be like, "Damn, you know, uh, the, the, the Lord is doing all these things." People, people not, people not thinking like that. Just mm -hmm. like the brother said, stock it. It's over there. Right. As long as it's over there, it's not, it's not bothering us. <laughs> yeah. We good. Yeah. That's, the, that's the same approach that people took with the C19 popped off. Oh, it's over there in China. It's over <laughs> there. Next thing you know, it's in the shores of America. Mm -hmm. What's happened over there? It was you can feel it. It was only a matter of time, yep. and it came over here, man. Yep. Yep. And, and the thing is, Americans like to eat. If you like to eat, you need to repent. <laughs> For real, bro. If you like to eat, you need to repent. <laughs> because the scriptures say famine is about to come to this place, man. And it says to, it is better to die by the sword than to die by famine, man. Right. So if you like to eat, if you ain't got no other reason to repent, man, you if you like to eat, you need to repent, period, man. Oh, <laughs> Go ahead, bro. God. Second Ezra 16 and, and 21. Behold, victuals shall be so cheap upon the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And that's the mindset of these people once again. All right, you can go to the dollar, you can go to the dollar store. You know, get things for a dollar twenty-five now. Right, the dollar twenty-five store. Yeah, yeah the dollar yeah. store no more. You know, Hyperinflation. Yep. What you, got? you go to Burger King, get some chicken nuggets. You know, ten chicken nuggets for a dollar. <laughs> hey, that's that's people. You know, they 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 thinking themselves to be in good case. Mm -hmm. All right, and it says, and even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion, mm -hmm. for many of them that dwell in the earth shall perish of famine. Right? Many people that you see around here, they're going to die of, of starvation. Yeah, and, and may I say, the scriptures say that dead bodies are going to lie in the streets, man. Right. You're going to see people on the streets. You're gonna, it's, it's like walking over a leaf. 
That's why you're going to be walking over dead bodies, man. It's going to get bad out here, man. We can't stress that enough. It's, like, uh, it's funny, too, because you're going to have a lot of these people think they're a good case because they got like a hundred grand in their, in their bank account, right? But how, how are you going to survive when the cheeseburger is going to cost you 10 grand? That hundred grand ain't going to mean nothing anymore. You know what I'm saying? Well, 10 cheeses, you done. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> right. And even if you do got money, you know, you, you still got to worry because what about all the people around you that don't got money? All right, people are gonna be people are gonna be watching you. You coming out of that grocery store? People are gonna be you. You gonna be, you gonna become a prey. Well, your your neighbors are already watching. They watching yeah. you right now. Yeah, they know if you got that 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 moolah. They're like, yeah, he got a little bread. You know what I'm saying? They already watching you. That's why I hate letting my neighbors know anything I'm doing. All right, I got uh, one, two more. Mm -hmm. Second Ezra 16 and 22, again, for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy it. You see, so, you, 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 like we were just saying, you might have money to buy food, but a nigga gonna come up and run up on you and, and kill you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what good was that money? That's why the scriptures say, riches shall not profit you in the day of wrath. Right, and, they, and, and, the, and these things are increasing, just as we say, because you, you, you watch the news, they're showing you that uh, there's young men out there dressing up as police officers, dressing up as whatever, knocking on your front door, mm -hmm. seeing if, waiting for you to answer the door. Yep. And yep. as soon as you answer the door, they rushing in. Yep. This is gonna become a common thing. Men following you home yep. from the supermarkets, all right? This is already happening. Yep. You yep. people just think happening. that you're in good case. Yep. You know, and, and it's, not, it's not too far-fetched because the crime rate has already increased 30%. And, and Food, you, you still can go to the grocery store and buy food. So how, how much more you think is going to rise when when hyperinflation, when a loaf of bread is going to cost uh, fifty dollars? You know, it's, the crime rate is going to continue to increase. Yeah, even if you're uh, driving in a car and you got a, the slightest feeling like that's not an official police car or police authority, you can you you supposed to drive slowly and call the police. You supposed to call the police station and say. I have a car following me. I'm not sure, but they have—they supposed to report in right. once they follow you. So that's how you know, man. Because Esau is a devil. Hey, you know. Time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, then you screwed. Esau is a demon, but that's another reason you need the Lord with you, man. Because Esau is a deceiver, man. He'll try to overthrow you. E Esau, eat him, man. Oh man. Hey, but how do you have get away from that scripture though? Many that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. Mm -hmm. How you run away from that, man? I got, I got one more. Second Ezra 16 and 23. And the dead shall be cast out as dung. All right, dung is shit. Yep. Right? And it says, and there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted and the cities shall be cast down. You know, so, we, you know, uh, uh, we're in Palm Beach. Palm Beach is a is a nice city. All right, but this this place is going to be looking like I Am Legend soon. <laughs> For real. You know? Hey, Apostle Arson, he said, hey, is I Am Legend going to become a real, a reality for these people? Sure I Am Legend going to be a reality I soon, man. Sure you know? That, that's what's going to happen, man. All the, go ahead. What you say, brother? That's why the movie was made. Yep, yep. All of these uh, post-apocalyptic movies they got. Program. All of these, uh, yeah, predictive program. They got all of these movies out here. To, to try to forewarn you of the, of the judgments that's going to come, man. And they got a movie called Lockdown 2025. They, 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 they quoted uh, Jeremiah 30 and 6. And yeah. Ooh, whoa, whoa. They've been watching, see? man. See, and they do that in those movies. Uh, they even did that in uh, the movie The Road. Uh, I believe they might have quoted Jeremiah 15 or 11. Uh, but it said uh, basically uh, the Valley of Hinnom, this is the Valley of Slaughter. They put they put all those uh, they put Bible verses in these movies, man. But if they put Jeremiah thirty and five, thirty and six in there, it's getting real, man. That's Jacob's trouble, man. But if you're unlearned, yes. if you haven't repented and returned unto the Lord, mm -hmm. that's gonna go right over your head. Yeah, yeah. They talking to us. They really know. They like they like, hey yo, we know who this is for. You know what I'm saying? Esau do stuff like he throw it in the movie to try to tease us. You know what I'm saying? Like even on uh, Brightburn. His mailbox number was 143. Yeah, yeah, he know yeah, we yeah, really yeah, looking yeah, for the 144. Yeah, yeah. So he like, all right, he know if it would have been 144, it would have been the spirit. So he like, all right, I'm going to throw him off with this, man. That's how Esau do, man. You know, try to mess up your mind with things, man. But we know according to the spirit what, what these things are, man. And that's when you really get in tune with this Bible. When you if you are a child of the Most High, man, you're able to understand this Bible on a different level, man. All right? Go ahead, bro. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. 
for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Uh, read that again, brother. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2. Uh -huh. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Right, the elect knows that the Lord is coming as a thief in the night, man. He's going to pop up on you people and you, you have no idea. And it's going to be in this generation, man. All right, your lifetime, the Messiah is going to return, man. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That's right, and that's what's coming, because when they say peace and safety, and that's how these people are, they're getting, they say, oh, well, you know, the C-19 start dying down, so now we got our, uh, like the brother, uh, Thumb Yad up in Cleveland, he said that jabber-dabber-do. <laughs> Everybody got the jabber-dabber-do now. So they, they, they all out here, uh, they peace and safety, they think they all good, but now you got this new variant come around, Starting to crush people, and everybody who's gotten the jabber dabber do all the people that's that's falling, man. You see, so when y'all say peace and safety, the same thing that y'all thought was gonna keep you is gonna be the thing to destroy you, man. Uh, I think that was the point on that. The water, yeah, jabber dabber do. I like that's a good one, yeah. He had me rolling with that one, but that's right, man. Everybody taking the jab, man. Everybody's falling susceptible to the, uh, the, the wilds of the devil, you see. Uh, can so, let's get Revelation 13 and 16 real quick. Because, you know, and I was even speaking to my mother. You know, I always tell y'all, brother, I, I, I love my moms, man. You know, at the end of the day, all moms got their ways about it. But I love my mother, man. The scriptures say, honor thy father and thy mother. You see? I, I, I love my mother. Now, she's done some off things. My mom would still be wearing colored hair in her head. But I know she got love for me. You know what I'm saying? So may the Lord have mercy on her. But I told her to not take the jab. And what did she do? She took it anyway. You see? And I, I, I was, she knew I was upset at her for it. I can even tell when she called me to tell me about it. But at the end of the day, the Lord is going to have us heal some of these people that got it, man. But this, this, uh, this thing, we can't save you from. This Revelation 13 and 16, it ain't nothing we can do about it. No matter my, how much healing, uh, bro the brother got the most spiritual powers on the earth. If you take that chip, it ain't nothing nobody can do for you, man. Judgment is coming. You're going to get dipped in the fire. That's right, bro. Uh, whoever got it can pull it out. Revelation 13 and 16 and he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead right and this is going to be that RFID chip because when you go into that word it go it means karagma or karats which goes into a uh, an injection of the flesh an incision of the flesh which is made by a palisade or a, 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 what's the other s word uh, a steak. A steak, the water, brother. A, a steak, man. Which is that needle that they use to inject it inside you. Yeah, they always have that little white needle. They put it inside and take it out. Now, people are going to be taking this in their bodies, man. Right? And so they're going to be subject to the, to the destruction of the Lord by taking this, man. Because now you've chosen a side. Ultimately, well, that's what it comes down to. If you take that chip, you're telling the Heavenly Father that you're now joined with this system, with this beast system, instead of with him. All right, and he says those that are not with me are against me, right? So you chosen the side, so ain't nothing left for you to do but to be destroyed, man. Go ahead, bro. It says, and verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. That's right, and no man might buy nor sell. See, they're already trying to give you an idea that uh, with the jabber dabber do. You speaking, see, speaking, yeah. of the, speaking of the Jabba Dabba Doo, cells uh, <laughs> have memory. However, the Most High created it to be, eventually it's going to want to go back to that. Mm -hmm. And the body is going to try to detox itself. Mm -hmm. And how? And when it starts to detox itself, it's going to do it in many ways. If it has to bleed itself out. All right? If, pu poison, if, if a uh, pus and poison comes out their body, it's trying to get rid of whatever that's in it. Esau, Edom, the so-called white man knows these things. Your body has memory. Your cells have memory. It always wants to go back to, the, to its original state. But if this foreign object is in your body, it's going to do whatever it can to get rid of it. So when you see blood coming through the skin, that's the body actually trying to help itself. When the body, when you feel yourself being drained, that means your body's energy is being redirected to fight whatever's in the body. Esau Edom knows these things, man. And you fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. That's right. 
Esau always get these people, man. Let's keep it real, bro. Let's, let's keep it real. Esau always get Jake, man. Always. Always, man. The so-called white man always getting over on our people. It always works, man. And so when are you going to wake up and be like, yo, you ain't getting me this time, bro? You see? You see? You see? It's enough. Now, it's enough, man. It's enough. Now we got the Holy Spirit to show us the difference. You know, this dude, he ain't going to get us this time, man. You know? Uh, uh, yeah, read, read, because you brought out a beautiful point, but right, go ahead, read that, uh, uh, for me, I don't want. Revelation 16, and, um, I'll start at verse 2. And the first went out and poured his vial upon the earth, mm -hmm. and there fell a, nois a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image. That's right, so it's going, you're going to have now, you're going to have an incurable wound, because the brother said, your body, when it's something is a chemical imbalance in your body, your body's trying to detox, you're trying to spit it out, trying to get rid of whatever it can to get rid of it. But see, what's, what they're going to get? They're going to get that incurable, that grievous sore that's going to come upon them because their body is going to have a negative reaction to that's it, why, man. That's why when your uh, lymphatic system is uh, over, uh, over uh, built up too much Boy, and it can't right. detox fast enough, that's when you get like uh, those sores in your body. Yep, yep. Because and that's how you get uh, whatever those uh, those bumps and stuff like that. Whatever they call them, I forgot what they call them at this point. But that's what happens. Lymph nodes. Lip, lip nodes. Yeah. That's what's gonna happen to your body. Mm -hmm. And uh, Apostle uh, Tahar was going in on that. It goes into like an ulcer. Right. A tumor, man. Right. All right. And that's incurable. You know, and, and it's not going. And the thing is, when you take this, it ain't gonna be you no. Know, oh, uh, let me go to uh, chemotherapy real quick. You know what I'm saying? And get cured up from this. Nah, man. All right, it's, it's going to be incurable. You're not going to be able to. That's what, the the scripture, thing, that's what the scripture say. And that's thing, right. And the thing about the MOTB is that the, the way that um, device is built, I'm trying to be wise by my right, words. Right, right, right. The way that device is built is that it has a tissue bonding capsule around it. So what it does is it, it infuses inside your muscle tissues. So it, it pretty much is meant to not come out. Yep. It's built to not come out. Yep. And even if. Go ahead, brother. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, even if you try to cut off, make a cutting in your flesh, which is going off too, all right, to take it out, you still marked for judgment. Yeah. And, and, so and, and, and eat, going back to Esau, eat him. Whenever you get a heart transplant, whenever you get a kidney transplant, you have, they have to put you on medication. They have to give you the transplant and wait and see because your body could reject it. That's man. right. Yep. How much more? The yabba dabba do. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And the grievous sore in Revelation 16 is talking about the cancer that it's going to cause. When you take oh, the MOTB, when you put that rice grain size device inside your body, it'll cause cancer because of all the radiation, radiation. that's flowing through it. And, and, and you said muscles, muscles, but also your nervous system. Yep. Uh, your muscles and nerves, and it's getting intertwined in there, man. You know, that that's not going to be beneficial for you. You, 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 you try to cut, people going to be trying to cut off. Uh, limbs and they cut off their hand, pull it out. You're gonna be destroying yourself for nothing. And it's gonna be like wrapped around like 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 the veins and stuff. Yeah. Remember that one movie he was trying to pull that thing out? It was like wrapped around and like the tissue was all that. Yep. Or upgrade. 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 Yeah, upgrade. Yeah, yeah. You had a question, brother? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It it affects your mental system, man. Yeah, it throws off your whole body, man. Your whole chemi your whole chemical makeup, man. It's going to be deterred. It's not going to be the way that the, the scriptures say that the most high made man in his image. Right? But now they're taking on the image of uh of uh this system. They're taking on the image of Esau, man. All right? So now you Esau is trying to be God. The scriptures say that he puts himself in the seat of the most high and try to be God. That's what he trying to do. Now we we just uh the brother uh Elder Barack Allah out Cali he said, uh, they got, they got basically robot face. You can, you can pay now for somebody to copy your face. Give me that, uh, uh, devices, uh, Satan. He's trying to come up with so much technology. That's right. Ooh, that's right, brother. Yep, yep. He's trying to come up with technology. Yep. Oh, you do? Okay. Hey, call all y'all about your massage. Okay. Hey, be a fan of the Lord, bro. But come, brother. Hey, good to hear, brother. Hey, the Lord, the Spirit set it up, brother. Hey, we glad to have you, brother. Glad to have you. Call all y'all about Shema Shah. You see? And so that, that, that's how you know now the, the mentality of this world, though. But Esau coming with the right. We, we brought our ass. He said, well, what do they do? Uh, so a man can pay. Basically, they'll pay a man $200,000, right, to take his face and use his face on robots. But Art said, well, what happens to the man? 
<laughs> no, I said what if the, if if it commits a crime, who goes to jail? Yeah, that's what you said. And then yeah, you said something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because see, see the, the 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 robot. It may just be a robot working in the office, whatever, whatever. Yep. But this, they they can control that robot. Yep. To, yep. To, 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 to to go do a murder. And it it's facial sudden, recognition all of now. You, it looks like you on the camera, but it's actually the robot. But they gonna come pick you up. Yep. Yep. Facial recognition. Yeah. 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 Like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a spirit. Yep, yep. Will, on Will Smith, I robot. You know. Terminator. Yep, yep. That's right, bro. Uh, you want you want to know what did you say after that? You said something like, "Well, what do they do to his face?" or something like that. You see? So does it, does he not have to get a, a face transplant? You know what I'm saying? To, to, because now they have ownership over your 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 DNA, your makeup for your face, man. And man, we dealing with the devil, man. What's that, what's that movie with Will Smith? I robot. Nah, the one Gemini where he had oh Gemini man. Oh, I never finished that one. Yeah, yeah. I never finished that one. Hey, that's why the scriptures talk about how he's gonna work. He's gonna work his lying miracles, man. That, those miracles is his technology. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what it is. The fact that you could be a paraplegic, and he's like, okay, you know, take this little rice grain device, and you'll be able to walk again. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. But that's his miracles, man, on the left hand side, which is his uh, technology. But the Lord, he got that on the right hand side. We're gonna, Lord willing, we be a part of that number. Lord, give us spiritual powers. We're gonna be able to just grab somebody and be like, rise and walk in the name of Yahweh Shai. Rise right. and walk, man. In the name of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, arise from the dead. Pick up your, you know? pick up your bed and walk. Right? That's right. right. And we're not gonna need that uh, because uh, what Elon Musk said. He gonna be he should be putting chips in people's head by 2022. Right. You see? Which so is next year, that's man. Next year. That, that's not even next year. That's next month. That's in yeah. three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. In two weeks, man. In two weeks, that's what's about to happen, man. You see? And these people have no clue what's coming down the pipeline, man. You know? They don't. Yep. They don't. They do. Edomite's going into slavery, man. Yeah. You see? And uh, hey, chip, <laughs> that, hey, you, uh, members to take the chip yeah, right there, man. Yep. yep. <laughs> and take that chip. Hey, Esau, you are you so called white people? We ain't talking to you when it comes to don't take the chip. You take that, man. That's gonna be for your benefit. You gonna die anyway. That's right. That's right. They 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 already. You know what I'm saying? You you it's, it ain't no salvation for you. So you might as well take the chip. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord ain't gonna be like, oh, yo, you know, I'm a, I'm a reserve. This. I'm gonna have mercy on this either, Mike. Tap into the metaverse. <laughs> right. For real. Go ahead, brother. Second Corinthians chapter two verse eleven. Mm -hmm. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. That's right. Hey, so what we were saying, and this time Esau ain't going to get us. Yep. He ain't going to get advantage of us. That's what the scriptures say, that uh, if it were possible, he would deceive the elect, man. It ain't possible, man. You ain't getting us this time, Esau. It's not working, man. You see? So it says, uh, ignorant, uh, read that one more time if you're still holding it, bro. Let's say this again. Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Let's say this again, advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. That's right. Let Satan get an advantage of us. And Satan is not speaking about a man with a pitchfork running around like, hey, I'm going to chip you. Nah, man. And the so-called white nation is the Satan that the Bible speaks of, the devil that the Bible speaks of, man. He shall right? cause all both small. And this is how you know. And see, this, this give me uh, Revelation, uh, what's that, 2 and 10 or 3 and 10 that speaks about uh, 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 casting the prison. Yeah. Because this is how you know that the devil is a man. Right, because there's, there's uh, ain't no ain't no ain't no man walking around no Satan no demon Satan running around red with a pitchfork throwing you into a jail, man. Go ahead, that's right. Go ahead, bro. Come on, this is Revelation two and ten. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Mm -hmm. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. See that? That's a cold cut. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. Who are the main groups of people that are casting people into prison? And, so all, and all of you, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you should know. Because it says that our people are, are hidden in holes, man. Our people aren't in prison houses. Who is the one that put you in there, man? That cracker. <laughs> that cracker. That's right. Esau eat him, man. He the one that threw you in there. That's Esau did it, brother. You see? Esau did that. So this lets you know that this man is the same devil that tried to get an advantage of you and try to overthrow you. But we know his devices. We know what he's up to. We know his schemes. We know his plots. All right. And so this time of you, if you know everything about and that's why the scriptures say never trust thine enemy, man. All right. Because when you trust him, he's just waiting to get over on you, man. Point blank, period, man. Call out your side. You know, so this, this is where your mindset got to be. It got to be focused on the Lord because Esau going Esau to try to get the best of you, man. You see? Uh, Which one? Two and ten? What you got? Tribulation ten days. Y'all finished Oh, he, he ready. You can read it one more time. Oh, yeah. Finished it? 
Yeah, it might have been more on it. Yeah, it was more on yeah. it. Yeah. Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. That's right. Fear not, man. You, hey, man, don't fear these things that Esau got, man. Because whatever Esau got prepared, it does not, not amount to the deliverance and the beauty and the glory of the Lord, man. All right? Every bad thing that happened to you, the Lord got two times something that's beautiful to make it work, man. If you get cast in a prison, the Lord might have you in there and you're going to get spiritual powers to get out. All right? The Lord going to, uh, they try to inject, a, uh, uh, try to straddle you down and try to put a chip in you. The Lord might give you spiritual power or he might give you that Superman effect. That needle might just break on your arm, man. Uh. This is what you got to believe, man. So don't fear, man. Put, give all praise and glory to the Heavenly Father in sincerity and he going to deliver you, man. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. That's right, bro. Might turn into like a visible man and just right. be like, where you at? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. they had a, what's that movie, that movie with Kevin Bacon? Did you see that one? No. Is that name through Kevin yeah. Bacon. I guess it's turkey bacon out there God, too. God, but, God, <laughs> bacon, bacon, bacon. You know what I'm saying? But there's a movie, um, uh, put, uh, somebody type that. Type Kevin Bacon Invisible Movie. Oh. I forget that name, but it might be called like Invisible, Invisible Man or something man, like that. Too. But basically he was doing experiments to try to become invisible, right? What'd you say? It's, it is called Invisible Man Con, the water. You know what I'm saying? That's a good movie too, man. You know, he end up, the thing is he couldn't counteract, the, he couldn't re, re, undo the thing, but this is why you need the Lord. Esau always trying to manipulate things to try to be like the Mosai. Is it Hollow Man? Hollow Man, man Tawada. Look, look. Uh -huh. You going off? No, I'm playing. I, I'm playing. The kind of Hollow Man. That's it. Yep. He, 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 was ba he was clear. You know, he was spying on his woman and shit. You know what I'm saying? But his, his footsteps, they were seeing his footsteps on the ground. You know, but the Lord is going to give us spiritual power soon. Stop looking. The Lord is going to give us spiritual power soon, man. You know, that's what that's what we're waiting for, man. That's what we're waiting for. We're not waiting on robots. We're not waiting on a defense from Esau. We're waiting on our Lord to lift up that standard and to show that his, he says, and then shall my elect be chosen, man. Then shall my elect be known. And see, look, I was thinking about this, you know, this brother's just a little my mind. I speak as a man. It would be hard if everybody who got spiritual power got white hair and white beards. They just running around. I said, oh, no, I just want to. <laughs> you know, that'll be hard. Yeah, they said, no. I'm like, ooh, that'll be hard. You know what I'm saying? That's just through the spirit, you know. You know, because yeah, I was is really that one with the, the hair and the wisdom. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, it'll be a beautiful thing. You don't know what the Lord is going to do with us. You know what I'm saying? As far as how, how our power is going to be shown, man. You know, but it'll be hard, though. <laughs> you know? But uh, get, uh, Psalms 110, I guess. You know, we can get Psalms 110. Let's get some spiritual power stuff. We can get some spiritual powers. Isaiah uh, 30, I think. Wait, 40 and uh, 29. Psalms 110. So, uh, 3 3. We can get to the point. This is Psalms chapter 110, verse 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the due of thy youth. That's right. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, man. So we can we gonna get spiritual powers, man. You know, the Lord said we're gonna do greater works than the Messiah did, man. You see? So come on, man. What 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 when in your churches, they ever talk about spiritual power in church? Never, bro. All they talk about is going up to heaven and being with Jesus. That's it. We ain't, ain't no spiritual power. You know, ain't no glory. Everybody's equal. Come on, man. Where, where's, the, where's the depth of the Bible? Where's the depth of the scriptures? The things that this world not talking about, man. Hey, and that's another thing, too. In these churches, they put you how much you on the box. Yep. Because they don't talk about spiritual power. They don't. They don't talk about the southern kingdom, northern kingdom. You know what I'm saying? They put the Lord in the box. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, the scriptures talk about how they limited the Holy One of Israel. Mm. Trying to put a limit on the Most High. You can't do that. Oh, no. No way, man. How can you? Look at all the look at all the things he's done. Man, look. For brothers that, you know, uh, uh, live in, let's say, first you live in a city, right? For brothers that haven't left their city. Then you got brothers who haven't left their state. Then you got brothers who haven't left America. Then you got brothers who haven't, you know, going out of the country. And then we got planets, man. How can you put a cap on the power of the Lord, man? Just looking at the water itself and the sun and the moon to let you know that he got a great, he, he does great works, man. You see? You can't put a cap on his power, man. You see Esau trying so hard to get there. Can't get there. <laughs> can't do it. This Isaiah 41, 
Verse 15 says, Behold, let me start at 14. It says, Fear not that worm Jacob and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small, and shalt make the hills as shaft. All right, so we're going to be when the elect gets spiritual power, they're going to be, they're going to be tearing shit up. That's right. All right. It's another one I was thinking of in Isaiah about uh, the young man shall, shall, shall not be weary. Isaiah, I, yeah, that's the one I said. Oh, Isaiah 40 and 29. Yeah. Yeah. So with those spiritual powers, we're going to be on a, we're going to be on a whole new level. All right. We're going to be able to, uh, our worst enemy, we're going to, be, going to be able to turn up into dust. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's yeah. right. It's 29 to 31. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faith. This is Isaiah chapter 40, verse 20, 28. Has thou, has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting power, the Lord, Yahweh Shemashah, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. There's no searching of the Lord's understanding, man. So a lot of people don't know how to fathom how is it that, the, that God has given mortal men power to be able to fly, to be able to run fast, to be able to punch through brick walls and shit like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no searching of his understanding, man. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, brother. He giveth power to the faith, and to them that have no might, he increased its strength. Mm -hmm. Even the youth right, shall... He said, he said uh, uh, give power to the... Read that part again. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. He giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might. Right, because we worms. Yep. You know, next thing you know, a worm, you know, next thing you know, a worm going to be able to... Gonna be, the Lord going to give us a, a defense mechanism. Yep. Right. You know, we're we going to be running flash. I mean, fast like flash. All right, brother's gonna be going crazy like Goku and Vegeta. Yep. You know, yep. exactly. oh, beautiful right there. I, I just want to say this: there's an episode of Rick and Morty where uh, Rick has turned to a pickle, <laughs> and then he, uh, from a fucking pickle, he became like this killing machine. He ended up getting arms and legs, and it's crazy. It's a good episode to see. So you know, it's a good example from coming from a worm to being something supreme. You know, yep. Isaiah chapter uh, forty verse thirty, even the youth. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young man shall utterly fall. Mm -hmm. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That's right, man. So it says even the youth shall faint. So you see it now. In the kingdom, the type of energy that the Lord about to give us, we about to be on a way higher level than a little child. Little ch little children, they got energy for days, man. You know, but at, at one point they eventually get tired. But those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, man. We ain't never gonna get tired. We are gonna sleep because we feel like it. You know what I'm saying? We gonna uh uh, you know, take a breather because we feel like it, man. But we gonna be putting in that work with them new bodies, man. We gonna mount up wings like eagles, man. We're gonna be like, we're gonna be at fellowship, like, hey, I can, you know, I ain't forget nothing, you know what I'm saying? Because I got that new brain, but I felt like doing it so I could go back to my house. <laughs> Just take off and fly, man. And so, some of those works are gonna be before our new bodies. Right. You know? Hey, that means our children are gonna be giving our service hell. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Running all over the place. <laughs> but they're not sleeping in. Ah! <laughs> it's up. <laughs> like, damn. Uh, this one on right now. <laughs> Come on. That's right, it's gonna happen now when the Lord gives us that spirit in Jacob's trouble, yeah? Yeah. That's right, brother. Yeah, because Ace, you gonna Ace, some brother's gonna be able to fly in Jacob's trouble. Best believe Hell yeah, that. yeah. Best yeah. believe that, man. Brother's gonna be able to walk on water. Hey, man, the Lord is about to make us show out through the spirit because this is to glorify him. You gotta think about it. We've been shitted on as a nation, much less as the men of the Lord, people talk down on us, they mock at us. They think we're nerds, we're weird, or we're this and we're that. Well, guess what? The Lord is about to show his power through us, man. We're going to be able to talk to animals and shit. You know, you're going to be able to know in the spirit. You see a bison walk by, you're going to, hey, Shalom, come here right quick. Hop on that bison, you gone, man. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of power the Lord is going to give us, man. That's right, Shalom. That's right, bro. Shalom. That's right. He 
even Apostle Hart said, hey, we're going to be the new celebrities, man. Yeah. Yeah. Three hey. No, I'm sorry. I mean to cut you off. No, no, I was done. The scriptures say he's going to give us praise and fame, you oh, know, man. and that's what made me think about the white hair and the white beard thing. Yeah, right. I'm like, oh, that's one of them right there. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm saying, brothers be doing zoom, zoom. Hey, that's hard, though. Flying, man. You know, that's what, you know, they be saying, Superman, is that a plane? He was like, is that a man in the Lord? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yo, hey, yo, you know, that, that, that's cool. That's what that's right there. It's going to be cool, too, because let's say they're trying to chase us. Like, they see it fast. They see us at a distance. But the moment we bend the corner, we gone. They be like, where'd he go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Out of there, bro. And I, you know what I'm saying? Brothers have had dreams with uh, with men of the Lord with spiritual powers, man. You know, I, I love seeing, I, I done had a dream, but Ari had spiritual powers. You know what I'm saying? Q had spiritual powers. I have seen the apostles with spiritual powers. You know, seeing, seeing brothers with spiritual powers is beautiful, man. You know, because and we know it's real. We know it's real, man. All right now, brother. That's right. It's a car. That's right, brother. Give me some of them Doritos. No, I'm playing. I'm playing, bro. I'm playing, bro. I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just messing with you, bro. Appreciate it, man. Take care. Shalom, brother. <laughs> you know? Hey, see, that's 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 the beauty that we're going to have in the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I pray the Lord have mercy on that, brother, man. You know, we're going to be in the kingdom. Brothers, we're going to be breaking bread because the thing is, we're not going to have any... Um, uh, limitations as far as brotherhood. We're not going to have limitations as far as finances. All right, because our people care for each other when we don't have anything. Right? We can be on the bottom. And, you know, I remember being young, and we we would have me and my brother got two dollars between us. We'll go and buy a burger, and we splitting the burger in half, man. You see, our people got love each other when we don't got nothing. That's why the scriptures say, uh, "How much more in riches?" You know, how, when we're in riches, we don't truly have love for each other, man, because we broke bread when we didn't have nothing, man. You see? And so that the brother was willing to offer his, his chips. I was just playing with him. You know what I'm saying? But he was like, hey, you can have some if you want. You got it, brother. It's Deuteronomy 28, and I'll start at verse um, 8. The Lord shall commend the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy power and walk in his ways. And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and that they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, and in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto thy fathers to give thee. It says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in its season, and to bless all the work of thine hand. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. Mm -hmm. I was meditating on that scripture um, this week, man. That's the spirit that this came out because we're going to be the ones, you know, giving people welfare funds in the kingdom and stuff like that, man. You know, uh, we're going to be that. Right now, you know, that's a part of the curses. You know, you use the world, don't abuse the world. But the Lord, he's going to flip that in the kingdom. We go and lend to them, and they're going to borrow. And we ain't going to, you know, we're going to be on top, man. And the reason why I brought that up is because the brother said it. We're all going to be. Every, every Jake, from the least Jake to the greatest Jake, they're going to have their own. You know? You know, sometimes you be in fellowship. You know what I'm saying? Brothers all got incense. Brothers all got Apollo. Brothers all got, uh, you know. Every it, 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 it's going to be like in the kingdom. We all going to have our own. We're not going to be lacking for nothing, man. That's right. Go straight love, man. That's what real love is going to look like. Because this world don't know what love is. Look like everybody's selfish. Everybody only think about themselves. They only want to take. I was watching a, a, a video today that said you have the, the so-called elite. They got all the money. They, they said they, they took up a uh, majority of the world's wealth last year. They, they had Tupac speaking. And Tupac was like, how did, how many, how, how these people got so much money, right, and got uh, 52 rooms in their house, and there's people out here with no rooms. You see, but that's because we're under the subjection of an unrighteous nation, an unrighteous ruler right now, man. You know, so the brother, uh, uh, you can bring out that precept for me, bro. You know, th th that's a part of the curses. But it's going to take a turn in the kingdom, man. And, and Garrett, you so-called white people, y'all going to get loans declined in the kingdom, man. That's right. All right? Go ahead, bro. God, this is Deuteronomy 28 and start at 43. The stranger that that is within thee shall, shall get up above thee very high, mm -hmm. and thou shalt come down very low. And this is a curse that would happen to the Israelites. So the stranger that's among us, they would get up very high. And why? Because now they have these businesses. They have these banks. All right. All of, every store we go into, these, these stores ain't owned by our people. Right. All right. These are owned by our enemies, man. We don't own that. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you don't own none of this stuff. You know? And if you do own something, it's, you still got a bank loan out. All right. You still got a mortgage payment on it. All right. You don't own anything, man. 
You don't, you don't even. Resources. You barely even own your own self. You're supposed to be able to own your blood, and they got. Oh, you got to come get get blood on. Man, we don't own nothing, man. All right. This is why we need the Lord to make this curse. Because when you read Deuteronomy 30 and 7, He says, "And the curse that is upon me shall become upon our enemies." Man, right. go ahead, brother. Verse 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. When you go up in Wells Fargo, PNC, TD Bank, Chase, you gotta get money from them. They don't come. They don't come knock on your door. Hey, yo, Gabar, can I get a fifty thousand dollar loan for my business? Nah, man. We gotta go to them. So in the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be established on earth, you, you all you so-called white people, you uh, so-called Arabs, you so-called Chinese people, you so-called Japanese people, you so-called Africans, all you people going to be coming to us, man. And uh, That verse you just had, brother, uh, that you just read, can you go back to that? Because there's a part in there where he says, they shall be afraid of thee. I want that in the part of, you read a small part above it. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to happen, man. And Isaiah the 60th chapter said, the nation shall, that shall not serve us shall perish, man. Uh, you got that part? Go ahead, read that, brother. Deuteronomy 28, and I'll uh, start at verse 8 again. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy power giveth thee. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself. He shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. And what makes us holy, man? The, the thing that makes the nation of Israel holy, first and foremost, all right, is the Lord set his love upon us, okay? That's number one. Secondly, with the law, when you read Deuteronomy 4, the fourth chapter and sixth verse, it says that that's going to be our, the law is going to be our wisdom to the nations, all right? And we got the Lord on our side. The Bible ain't about uh, religion. The Bible is about a connection that the Heavenly Father got with his chosen people. That's what the Bible is about. And so because you're not his holy people, you're not going to be able to see it. Right? Go ahead, brother. As he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy power and walk in his ways, mm -hmm. and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord. And all people of the earth shall know that we are called by the Lord, man. Go ahead. And they shall be afraid of thee. And they shall be afraid of thee, man. You people are going to be shaking in y'all boots real soon when y'all see us, man. That's what's going to happen. Y'all, well, uh, during the civil rights movement and right before of a so-called black man was walking down the street, all right, and a, and a so-called white man walked down the street, got to put his head down and step in the street. Y'all, y'all gonna fear us, man. Like Elder Kazai said, when y'all see our fringes, y'all gonna be afraid, man. That's what's gonna happen real soon, man. Y'all gonna be afraid of us, man. And that's because we're gonna come and wait till we get our new bodies, man. We're gonna be truly godlike. Uh. I think that was it on yours. They yeah. see that ripping of blue, boy, they gonna get it. Yep, they gonna know it's going down, man. Y'all, y'all, see that thing? So-called white man had to instill a, a carnal fear in us by pulling out his whips. Hey, man, man, yo, you so-called white people only enslaved us because we are our disobedience to the Heavenly Father. That's the only reason why, and that's written in the Bible. If it were not for that, y'all would have never done it, right? The only reason the so-called white nation was created was to whoop us. You're a big-ass belt, that's it. And what happens when a belt get worn out? You throw that shit away, man. And according to Obadiah, you so-called white people are going to be thrown out of the earth, man. Job 18 says you shall have no more remembrance in the streets. Right. Go ahead, bro. Deuteronomy 28 and 44. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Mm -hmm. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So right now, the so-called white man is in rulership. All right? And if you're too foolish to recognize that, then you're an idiot, man. The so-called white nation and the, the small hat people are the ones in rulership right now, man. And if, you're, if you don't know that, that means you're being idiotic about the state of the world. All right? And the scriptures say when the so-called white nation is ruling the earth, after that, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, are going to be the next in rulership. And there ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. And it's not about your skin color. It's about your nationality and your bloodline. All right, because you're going to have our people that are scattered amongst every people upon the earth. But majority of you so-called white people are Edomites, according to the Bible, man. Right. right. Uh, you can keep reading, actually. Uh, verse 45. Moreover. The water, sorry. If I came a little hot. No, you good. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The Lord said we will be destroyed if we don't hearken unto his voice. So when you see our people in prisons and ghettos, 
All right. I, I was I was uh, with a guy in the Uber the other day. He said uh, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, we're entering the bad part right over the railroad tracks, you know, over by Tamron. He was like, he was like, Eli, look, it's a guy in the street. And really, he's saying, look, it's a nigga in the street. You know what I'm saying? I, I know what he's saying through the spirit. But these people are here with the only reason we're on the bottom is because of our disobedience. And the only reason you're on the top is because the Lord says he will set up a base people above us, man. Since we wanted to serve your gods, he's going to make us serve you. That's what happens. So through our disobedience is the only reason you're in rulership, man. That's biblical. Go okay. loser of thy brethren, man. That's the Edomite for you. Jake, you know, not saying Jake is faultless, but that's what Esau does. He loves to try to slander and point the blame on us and make us look like something we're not, man. Yeah, yeah. He loves to do that. Yeah. That's right, brother. That's right. That's right. Absolutely, bro. Go ahead. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God mm -hmm. to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded. Verse 46. And they shall and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So now we're no this is the scriptures say. These curses are the way how we can identify God's chosen people on the earth, period. Your pastors might not talk about this, right? They keep this part hidden. But he says, these curses shall be upon thee and thy seed forever. So now we can be able to establish who his chosen people are based on these curses. And these curses go into the, the fact that our children will be taken away, that we will be in slavery, that we will be sold to our enemies, that our brothers will hate one another, all right, that our women are going to hate us. That our women are going to hate their children. So many things that our, our businesses will be cursed. Right? We tried to set up uh, Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Esau shot it down. And that's because the Lord said, nah, we got to, them curses got to happen. So we couldn't al allow that to, uh, uh, to occur. That's why it says a sign and a wonder. You know, that's why no matter where we are across the four corners of the earth, we're always a sign and a wonder. You know, we're always in the ghettos. We're always shunned. Yep. You know, even amongst the other nations. Uh, uh, the, po the poor amongst the other nations most likely are our people. Not yep. all of them, mm -hmm. but they, they segregate us to certain cities, yep. certain remote cities that have no access to the things that the cities have and the suburb have. All right, and they leave us over there to fight to fend for ourselves. All right, so and that's a sign and a wonder because we, even in India, what do they call us? The untouchable. That's right. They don't want nothing. To, they don't want nothing to do with us, man. Yep. They cut us off. They, you, oh, here in Babylon. Well, at least we have we have access to like uh you know like a uh, 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 social security and stuff like that. The other nations don't treat us like that. They like man, put them over there and leave them over there. <laughs> right, for real. Yeah. No running water, no electricity, none of those things. Mm -hmm. Our people got and when they and when they see those people, and, and and the spirit is the Lord will take one of those people and make them overcome and place them amongst them, having a nice job, mm -hmm. having nice things, but they never forget where they came from. That's the spirit of the Lord, man. Our people, the most I put, put, put in us uh, put a peculiar spirit, man, yep. a stronger spirit. Even when you put us at the very bottom, we always rise to the top. Like how, right. Sway? Always rise to the top. That's right, bro. Right. That's right, bro. Ah, uh, man, they really, in India, bro, they really put us in remote areas. We don't have nothing. People, our people that made their way out of those ghettos, they go, they go to these schools, become doctors, and they come back, man. They supply the, the, the they, they, they bring the supplies, man. They have to steal the supplies. They have to bring the supplies to take care of their people, man. That's right, bro. And, and see, this, that's why we glory in the Bible. Have you been, a, have you been a, what does the underdog want more than anything? To win. To be at the top. That's what the underdog want. And the Bible is the greatest underdog story ever written, man. How the people on the bottom of the earth gonna be your next rulers, man? Y'all, y'all love football, right? You so-called white people, y'all love football. Y'all love when the underdog win. Now that's my team, but you ain't rooting for us, though. We the underdogs. Why y'all ain't rooting for us to win? It's because y'all are enemies, man. Go ahead, brother. Isaiah fourteen and two, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants. And handmaid. This is biblical. It says we're going to take you people and we're going to possess you as servants and handmaids. Where is this in church? They don't tell you that slavery is okay. Slavery is okay with the most high, man. It's cool, but y'all don't understand it. He put us into slavery. Y'all think y'all going next, man? Get ready for them chains, man. And, and, and see, we good because we done been through slavery after slavery after slavery after slavery, man. 
We done been under the Egyptian captivity, the Assyrian captivity, the Babylonian captivity, the Medio Persian captivity, the new Babylonian captivity. We done been under slaves everywhere on the earth, man. So we that's why we we didn't got we got conditioned with the pain, man. You know what I'm saying? Homeborn slave. Is Israel a homeborn slave? We got conditioned with being slaves. But you so-called white people, y'all ain't never been true slaves, man, as a nation. So y'all gonna be fighting, y'all gonna be going against each other, y'all gonna be out in that sun, y'all gonna be your skin gonna be flaking and burning, got chains on, you gonna hate your woman and hate your children. It's not gonna be pretty, bro. It's not gonna be pretty. And we're gonna be in our palace in our kingdom, raising a roof, bro. Glorifying the Lord, man. Our house built out of stones, man. You know, our wives are going to be beautified. You know, our children are going to be happy. Quick reset. You got it. Uh, this is Jeremiah 30, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devout, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity. That's right. Every one of you. That's right. That's right. That's right. He ain't leaving one. He'll be like, well, I'm a, I'm a nice so-called white person. Well, if you're truly nice, if, you're, if the spirit dwells with you, then you might you might be an Israelite. But ain't no so-called nice, so-called white people. Ain't no cool, so-called white people. Now, there's some, like I said, they really Israelites. If you met a so-called white person that got that sauce like a so-called black person, that's because they ain't Israelite and they just don't know it. All right? But you actual so-called white people ain't going to be pretty for y'all, man. Like the brother said. Uh, but get this, and uh, if any brothers got any finals after this, we can wrap it up. Isaiah 14, I'm starting at 1. For the Lord, Yahweh, will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel uh -huh. and set them in their own land. Yep. And the strangers... It's should... it. it says set them in their own land. This is how you let you know that that land that they call Israel now, that's our homeland. That's not theirs, man. So the Lord's going to set us back over there. The real Israelites are not dwelling in that place, man. Those are imposters. That's why they're fighting over it. The Palestinians and the Israelis, man. Go ahead, brother. All uh right. -huh. And the strangers shall be joined with them, mm -hmm. and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Th those are talking about the Israelite foreigners that I was just mentioning. This don't mean that all of the other nations are like, oh yeah, we, we part of the nation of Israel now. No, these are Israelite foreigners that were scattered amongst the other nations that now, real, that now know that they're Israelites and they're coming back unto the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 2, and the people shall take them and bring them to their, to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives who captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. That's, what was, that's what's coming. All you so-called white people want to know, your, your masters are going to look like us real soon, man. It says we're going to rule over our oppressors. We're going to oppress them that oppressed us, man. All right? And that's just righteous, man. That's just fair. If we're going to talk about fairness, let's just be real. Y'all had us. We built this country for y'all. Y'all got free labor. Your parents and family live in Palm Beach. You got rich houses. You got uh, nice cars, man. You've had your time for rulership. Why? Let's be fair, man. It's our turn, man. It's our turn. And the thing is, our turn ain't going to never end, man. You so-called white people going to have a perpetual slavery for a thousand years. And then after that, you're going to be destroyed off the face of the earth. That's right. Period, man. On God. <laughs> Uh, Can I get verse three? Yeah, go ahead, bro. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from my sorrow and from my fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. You know, so the Lord, he gonna give us rest from our sorrow. All right, we, we not gonna, we not gonna be de depressed in the kingdom. All right, we not gonna be sad and cry. All right, we not gonna have to see our, uh, our people getting gunned down in the streets anymore. All right, we're we, we going to be at rest. We're not going to have to labor for Esau. All right, five, six, seven days out, out of the week. All right, we're we not going to be subject to payments anymore. You know, we finally go, going to be free, and we don't know what that's like. You know, but we know that it, that's, that's going to be beautiful. No you know? more clock. Nope. That's no right. more clock, baby. That's right. We're going to go in, we're going to move in the spirit of the Lord. We're living forever. Come. Oh, hey, real talk, if you're living forever, what you really need a clock for? Come. <laughs> Uh, you got one? Go ahead, bro. This is 2nd Ezra 8, in verse 54. Let me start at 53. It says, The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness in the mouth is hid from you. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. And, that, and that's because the Lord is going to give us new bodies. It says, Sorrows are past, 
and in the end it showed the treasure of immortality. So just like the brother was reading, all right, no more crying. All right, it's just gonna be, it's gonna, it's just gonna be joy and living because we're not truly living here, and we're gonna live forever. The treasure of immortality. That's right. Woo. That's good. Uh, anybody else got a final one? My stuff. This is Lamentations three. I'm gonna start at twenty one. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we were, we were not consumed because his compassion fell not. That's right. Hey, it says uh, because of his mercies we were not consumed. It say apocalypse on it. That's a, it looked like a cyber truck. Yeah, it's like a Hummer. It's like a Hummer with a cyber truck drop on the back. It's a hellfire and apocalypse. Let me get this on camera. Y'all see that truck right there? That big one right there going down? It's a hellfire and apocalypse on it. See, it's a apocalypse. Esau getting ready for martial law. You know, he getting ready. So they they know, man. They know that we ain't just talking madness. Uh, the the so-called you, you people's apocalypse is coming, man. All right? But hey, uh, yeah, man, because of the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed, man. You know, and that's what we thankful for because the Lord's showing us mercy right now. But he's about to take that mercy away from this earth, man. And he's going to leave it upon his elect. And those are the only people going to receive it. All right? Um, anybody else? All right, so hey, man, we're the Hebrew Israelites. We come in week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of this wicked nation known as America, which is Babylon the Great, according to the Bible. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the children of Israel, according to the scriptures. You so-called white people are going into slavery, according to the Bible. Right. All right, we want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. All right, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Shalom. Shalom. Ababa Ball. Ababa Ball. Come, Yashallah.